Warning, the following contains material that may be too disturbing to some people. Descriptions of violence, mature situations, and adult themes. This is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. We are live. Welcome to Forest of Flesh episode 55. Today is 55, I think. How are you guys doing? How's your week been? I know Wolf is a little under the weather. Uh, how about the rest of you folks? My week has been hectic. Can relate. But better now. Good. But, and there's a week. It's been snowing here, so I have to do a bunch of shoveling. Yeah, I've had a lot of snow here too uh, lately. Um, I don't know. It's like starting to warm up today, which is nice, but I'm tired of the cold weather. Um, We're apparently going to get stagnant air this week, and I am worried it's going to mean we're going to get snow again, because it's been getting really cold. <laughs> I don't like snow. You guys I, keep your snow. I used to love snow, but now I'm getting to where, maybe it's just because I'm getting old and bitter, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to where I'm not a huge fan of snow anymore. Um, I'm still a fan. <laughs> uh, let me just tweet out the uh, stream uh, I want, want somebody to talk while I do that <laughs> uh, what happened last week let's talk about that we got a tag stuff <laughs> <laughs> so you guys we picked up with uh, you guys Orlin Mostly reading through the uh, the journal the the or the journal the the book that you guys found on the uh, on the uh, the monk right Melissa Joe's book and uh, it sort of had like a, a montage of what led him to being a corpse on the ground um, and uh, you guys were sort of trying to like some of you were kind of trying to make sense of it or use it maybe to help. Uh, the chaos of this place not be so chaotic, right? So some of you were trying to like calm your mind and find your center and like listen to the stuff, the advice in the book about, um, you know, like living in the moment and stuff like that, thinking it might it might help. While others were like, Vash, and I'm talking about you. Others were like, uh, no, this sounds like a bunch of bull, <laughs> basically. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and then you guys ended up uh being attacked, right? Before that, a couple of us decided to test and see what all was working because we realized some stuff was going on and Bash couldn't cast most of his spells. And Any of the spell. I can't do crap. Uh, the rest of us, some, <laughs> sometimes we had to try and cast our spell multiple times to get it to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This... <laughs> and then Orlin utterly destroyed a rock with her bow. <laughs> yeah. Your spells have mostly been stronger, it seems like, because you use yeah. a lot of evocation stuff. And, uh, yep. uh, yeah, a lot of folks are having trouble, or as you're just blasting everything, kind of. Um, I threw a couple of these things off the map, but they did not stay gone for long. Um, so. And uh, you guys were sort of set on by these flesh uh, creatures um, that have sort of like been attacking you guys since Odain dismissed the hut. Uh, they, rolled a, they rolled a crit on their stealth for some reason um, because Chaos Plateau makes sense being in the realms of chaos. Um, and uh, yeah, and they've been just like you've been having a hard time dealing with this threat. Let's put it that way. I got, uh, got confused and almost walked off the thing, but 
luckily grabbed onto the edge. Yeah, like, it was more like bits of Shaw's own skin grabbed onto the edge. Like, stripped off and, like, grabbed onto the edge and, like, parts of it fused into the flesh on the edge. And, like, held Shaw in place. Uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, some of you have become infected by these things. Um, some of you have become engulfed by, uh, one of these things and infected and things are looking pretty grim for some of the party. Uh, but, uh, you had some folks at the end of the round last session. It looks like some folks were showing up to maybe assist. Uh, we'll see how useful they are. Um, yeah, that's the gist of it. Since I think. they don't do magic, they'll be a lot more useful. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, look. You know, they they do technically have some psionic spells, um, but, uh, you know, nothing super useful, nothing super important. Right. I forgot that Gith get the bonus spell stuff. What are the red and green dots? Do you remember? Uh, the red dot is the infection. The green dot, I think, is... Uh, Bardic inspiration. Yeah. Orlin gave it to oh, you yeah. guys. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let me bring the turn order back up because we still have that ready to go. We should um, add like that. a little harp symbol so that we can use that for Bardic inspiration. Yeah, that's a good idea. Is there a music note in there somewhere? Well, let's. I don't I think I remember. I didn't like see that. one. If there should be. I don't think so. We will have to make one. There's no, no, I don't see one. Uh, that's okay. We'll make one at some at some point. We'll make one after today, I think. Or you should make two, one two different colors. A one yeah. Oh yeah, day, because two different. Because Orlin has a different uh dice than Odin does. Right on. What about when I multi-class bard? <laughs> <laughs> make it three. <laughs> All right, everyone is taking a level in Bard. Um, all right, well, let's be OP. Let's uh, cue up some fight music, shall we? What are these? Uh, those are the flames that were left over by someone's attacks, and they have a turn counter on them. They're going to keep blasting that area. I think <laughs> it might be Orlin's Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Blast. Or, or something. Maybe Ishu's. There was also... Yeah, one of Ishu's huh. firebolts yes. was there. I think one of Ishu's firebolts was in the same spot as this blast. I think uh, some of them got removed because they're... Tr oh, yeah, there is one right there. Yep. Yeah. Um, some of them had already counted down because they lasted for so many rounds or whatever. Mm. Um, uh. But I uh, I don't think I need to tell you how grim the situation is looking for <laughs> Odain specifically, but also Melora. They're... They're both infected, they're both engulfed, and they're going to take serious damage uh, every round. Um, that is not good. That's not good. I will say that. But the creature is stunned, right? Um, so there's that. Somebody stunned it. I don't remember who, but it's got a stun marker on it. So. Is it Shaw? Yeah. I think it Shaw's failed. You can stun. It failed, oh, right. like, a stunning yeah. strike. Yeah. Um, okay, so first thing they gotta do here is roll for the uh, initiative on these guys. It's top of the round. Let's see how they do. 14 isn't terrible. Uh, they're gonna go just before Vash, but the Chaos Beast will go first. So, that's not good. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. Well, Lyram, you're up, bud. Save the day, please. Lyram is 
a little bit concerned. But I think he's just gonna... Do I see the ones that are back off to here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're, not, they're not hiding or anything at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna move over to this side. And then over to here. Just be a little bit farther away from that whole mess. Okay. And then... I think I'm just gonna swing a Shadow Blade a couple of times, so... Roll for the first swing here. If my roll 20 will work. There we go. Uh, 11, <laughs> 11 won't do it. That's a natural 2. And then green flame blade swing after. Okay. Uh, a 24 hits. Hmm. Uh, first All right. Fire. And 22 psychic. And it's it's not the seven, right? It's just the ten plus twenty two. It's the yeah, it's the ten plus the twenty two. All right, so thirty two. Okay, uh, the creature. I mean, it's certainly bloodied. Uh, it's beyond bloodied. It was before. Lyrim will back up this way towards this tower now. Yeah, one more attack. No, I only have one attack, and then um, wait, I have um. advantage. You have advantage. It's stunned. It is stunned. Oh, that's right. yeah. Okay. So that the first one would have hit then. Yeah. The first one. The second one would hit. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one, would that include the psychic damage or would it just no. be? I didn't mean to roll damage there. Hang on. It won't include the fire one. So the second one. Oh, the second one's a crit. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Hang on. So the first, the first one that would hit, would that still have done 10 fire and 22 psychic? Without the, green? the first one would have done the 22 psychic. Okay. The second one would have been the 10 fire and then I rolled. Uh, two more d8s, and then the normal shadow blade damage. All right, so roll so shadow blade damage. Uh, forty-one. Is it both of those combined? Uh, we're not. We're not. The twenty-five plus sixteen. Okay, we're not adding any, then, any extra from the ten. Okay, so forty-one. No. And then the ten fire, and then this fire also. Another thirteen fire. So twenty-three fire. Okay. Uh, nice. It's barely hanging in there, my guy. Like, you're cleaving off parts of this thing. And it's funny because, like, Odin and Malora are trapped inside of it. So you're just, like, carving off hunks of flesh that just sort of, as soon as they are separated from the body, they burn up uh, in the air before they hit the ground. Um, and Do somehow, I get any glimpse of Odin or Malora in there? Yeah, you can see them, yeah. Do they look dead to me? Uh, no, they're screaming in agony. Um, and there's, they're like, like skin. Flesh. Yeah, there's sort of like music. There's skins coming. Yeah, it's sort of like music. Uh, there's, the skin is coming <laughs> apart and stuff. Um, they're in they're there. Starting they're starting to look how Vash looked because you, you didn't help Vash, uh, because he looked like he was turning into one of the things. Yeah. And they're like, they're also like scrambling and trying to get out desperately, but there's like tentacles that keep pulling them back in and stuff. Like, it's just a nightmare. Yeah, Lyrim will back up to a reasonable distance and that's my turn good turn you did like 80 damage or something like you did a lot of damage <laughs> uh oh Dane. here we are again oh Dane. let's see I here do anything uh, uh i need you to roll a d eight wait uh i'll uh, uh, say Elf creature can't breathe. It's restrained at the start of each of the Chaos Beast turns. Okay, so you don't take damage yet. Uh, each round the creature spins. Okay. So I need, I guess you're. So you're restrained. You're. You can't breathe. Um, and I need you to roll a D8 to determine like what you do because you're infected. I guess. Uh, a five. On a five or a six, the creature takes no action or bonus action and uses all of its movement to move in a randomly determined direction. You can't move. I can't move. <laughs> yeah, you're restrained. Um, so do I do my charisma check now? Or charisma save now? Uh, each, yes. Go ahead and reduce your wisdom by one. 
and make your charisma check DC 18. It's a saving throw. You have Doesn't it, the minus one happen if he fails? Uh, each round. Yeah, it's a full round, so we'll see at the end of the... It doesn't say, like, what part of the turn. It just says each round the creature spends. Its wisdom is reduced. So, yeah, we'll wait till after you after the save if you fail it. Uh, you Ooh. succeed. The DC was 18. Um, let's see here. Can repeat the save at the end of each of its turns. Ends the effect on a success. You're no longer affected by the flesh chaos madness. Um... Your wisdom stays reduced, however. But you come to your senses. Your skin stops uh, feeling like it's on fire at all the nerve endings. And uh, you suddenly like gain uh, awareness. You realize you're stuck in the belly of this thing, but there's nothing you can do about it now. That is the end of your turn. Save. Uh, <laughs> do I? Do I have to make a save? Uh, no, you made your save. Oh, I meant like, don't I have to make a save if I end my turn next to them or something? Yeah, if he's in contact with it. Um, let me see the thing. Oh yeah, that's right. Hang, because the engulf thing. Uh, any creature that touches is hit by the claw attack or takes damage from being engulfed by it. Okay, so it'd be during not yet. Turn. It would be yeah during the creature's turn is when you would take the damage. Um, so yeah, not yet, I would say. Okay. Uh, Melora, who is also affected, uh, what does she do? She rolls a three. On mm. a three, the creature does nothing. She can make that. Nothing. Yeah, she can make that charisma save on her turn, at the end of her turn, though. <gasps> um, let's see here. Melora... Charisma save. Uh, she saves. And that. Let me go ahead and get issue sheet open while I'm thinking about it. All right. Uh, that is her turn. Orlin. Okay. Um. All of her people are dealing with this guy, so she's going to Eldritch Blast that guy through her bow. So, what was I need to roll? An intelligence? Uh, it was... Or Arcana, right? Yeah, I believe it was Arcana. Where is my thing? I don't think there that... we go. Uh, I don't think that does it. Can't no, the, 10, I think. the check is 10 plus the spell's level, so a 9 is a failure. Check fails, the spell slot is lost, and the spell fails. The Sergeant's Blast, so at least it was just a cantrip. Um, you still have a <laughs> bonus action. I do. Um, do you hear? Huh? Uh, I'm doing it. Never mind. Okay. Um... <laughs> All right, so Lyrim seems to be doing quite a bit of damage to that thing. So I think she's going to call out to Lyrim, um, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. And she's giving you a bark inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Good stuff. All right. Is that your turn? Yeah, I'm not going to move. Okay. Chaos Beast's turn at the start of his turn. Uh, creature space takes an engulfed engulf creature. takes 48 plus 6 piercing damage at the start of each of the Chaos Beast's turns. Was the stunned until oh. the end of Shaw's turn or until the end of this thing? End of its turn. End of, end of its turn? Yeah, end of this yeah. creature's start. turn. However, oh. here's, here's the wording. So... And I'm looking at that last paragraph. You take the damage at the start of each of the creature's turns. It's, like, automatic. I'm thinking it's, like, yep. you know. Would that... It would That damage would still apply, right? It just doesn't get to take an action or anything? 
I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, that would make sense. All right, so Odane and Malora, you're going to take some damage. Let's pray that it's low uh, for Odane's sake here. Uh, 48 plus 6. Piercing damage. 20. 20 damage yeah. exactly. Just enough. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, Odane goes down. He is unconscious. Laura takes 20 also. And I need both Melora and Odane to make, because you're technically still alive, to make charisma saves. DC 18. I mean, it's probably not going to be what puts you out. If anything does, but um, here's Melora's nineteen. She succeeds. What about you, Odin? Succeeds. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure it doesn't kill you or anything like automatically when you get reduced to zero. It doesn't look like it does. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And that is the Chaos Beast's turn. It ends its turn. It's no longer stunned. And now we get to the Monk Boys. Uh, Isn't see. there another one up to the right? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It's still far away. Hopefully it can't reach anyone. I mean, it's going to use its action to dash. Oh. <clears throat> there are things closer to it. Does it not see them? Covered. Well, it's it's kind of heading towards oh. you guys, right? <laughs> like these guys have come up behind them. Let's give it a perception check, shall we? See if it's... Let's see if it sees them. We'll set the DC as uh, 13. Okay. It sees them. It's going to go after this guy then, I guess. He is dead. There's no way he's going to survive an onslaught from this thing by himself. Um, we can move to there. Right there. And two claw attacks, or it could just engulf him right now. A noble sacrifice. <laughs> I think we'll engulf. Uh, so can we have 20 feet and enter the space. Whenever the chaos piece enters a creature space, creature must make a DC 18 dex save. Uh, they're pretty Stay good at those. They're pretty good at dex. Uh, he fails. Oh no! <laughs> uh, on a failed save, the uh, the chaos beast enters creature space, and the creature takes damage for d8 plus six. Okay, so he takes 31 piercing damage, uh, and. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else this guy can do? It can move. Uh, it's already it's already moved as much as it can move though. All right, so that guy is... In oh, yeah, I guess, I guess he has to make a save, right? He has to do the charisma save for being hit. Uh, his charisma is not great. Six, he fails and is infected. All right, now, that is the, uh, the big Chaos Beast turn. Now we'll get to the Monk's turn. 
Uh, the guy who's infected and engulfed will roll a d8 to see what he can do. On an eight, uh, the creature makes a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, so the only creature in its reach is the Chaos Beast. So he could still get to attack it. Uh, he misses. <laughs> That's with a plus seven. He rolled a natural three. He misses and he's inside the thing. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like, he, he just like, he hits something, but maybe it's like a piece of bone or something. You know, it's like there, some, some yeah. part of it where he can't do damage. Um, he's also a blob of flesh at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he just right. merges a little bit with the, the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other two. I don't feel like these guys are going to be so much our saviors as delay tactics. <laughs> yep. We might survive as they eat them. They worried about their companion. <laughs> okay, so you can... Your long jump is equal to your strength. Is that how it works? I believe so. Okay. Because mm -hmm. so they have some... They have the jump spell on them. Uh, which triples the distance. Right. Uh, I thought you can't cast the spell if you were a sponge. What? No. They already had it on them. It's a one minute duration. Oh, oh okay. Um, you gotta move at least ten feet, too. But, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, they spent their whole... Yeah, they can move ten feet uh, and then jump thirty-nine feet if they need to. Uh, yeah, they can move ten feet <laughs> towards you guys. Uh, I'll put that guy there. And then they can just jump thirty-nine feet. Oh. 39 feet, which is enough to get them within range. Don't they have to roll the jump spell? Uh, well, it's already on. They had already done it. Yeah. yeah. It was well, already... I think they they just kept trying to cast jump until it worked, and then they they <laughs> well, they, yeah. they cast it. They cast it while they were sprinting toward you guys, like last round or something, right? Uh, I think okay. they're native of this plains, I guess. Yeah, too. they have easier time. They are. Uh, but the the jump distance is part of their movement. So oh, if they only so. have thirty movement, they can only jump twenty feet. Oh, okay, so it doesn't help them at all for that. All right, it's really dumb. It but is. That's weird. jumping is, is has not been thought out very well. Well, then I guess they only get twenty more feet of movement. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, five, ten. 15, 20. Uh, he'll stay out of the fire. Um, and then I guess they would use their action to dash if they can't do anything else. Um, their reach is not that far. Do they want to get that close if they can't attack, though? Because yeah, Aren't they familiar with these things? Get, Probably somewhat, they too close but to they're, also, they're also fearless. Um, oh, gosh. Relatively speaking. <laughs> Well, fearless doesn't mean stupid. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at other stuff they can do, but they're trying to help, right? This guy could reach this they thing, could, the small one. They could That's ready right. an action to to attack it if it comes near them. Right. Yeah, or they can cast something. No, oh, yeah. If they have some. Technically, they all could like reach that guy. True, yeah. Those two could have gang up on the little one. Hmm. <laughs> All right. This guy will go towards the other one. Let's see. 10, 15, 20. He was like up here. 5, 10, 15, 25. He'll go at this guy. This guy will stay right there, but he's going to cast this spell. Um, show description. 
so the creature must make a wisdom save. DC. Does 14. he have to roll an arcana? I get. I, I. Let me see the description for it. Is it creature limbos? Uh, or cast a spell anywhere? Yeah, he does. So let's see if he can make that arcana check. I doubt it. Maybe he can. Uh, oh, there. Look at that. He actually has a plus six. So that. That may be the. I clicked the wrong thing. I was looking at the wrong creature <laughs> when I gave you their stats. They have, uh, these guys are CR6. They're the Githsarai Zerth, if you want to check and make sure that I'm being honest. They do have a plus six to Arcana checks. Uh, it's not, I clicked it, but it's not popping up. Let me try clicking it again. There it goes. Uh, he it fails. probably roll 20. No. Yeah, he fails, because it'd be 10 plus four. It's a 14 oh, yeah. four. Yeah. Uh, so the spell does not happen. He wastes his turn. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, the other guy who is uh, engaged with this one uh, um, hmm. probably know these ones can't transform them, right? So you can just punch. They can, actually. Oh, they can? I thought it was only the big ones. No, they just do it in a different way. The small ones do Ugh. it by attacking you. Like, they have to hit you. Whereas the big ones do it uh, like any, any contact at all, basically. He's a super monk. He's confident he won't get hit. <laughs> um, I mean, he is probably pretty confident he won't get hit. What's the range? Okay. We'll have him make an Arcana check, too. He, he also fails. Uh, so, neither of those guys do anything. Vash, your turn. Our saviors have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> This is just the grandest entrance I've seen in a while. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, D8, yes. All right. A one. That's, ooh, a one. Do nothing. What happens? On a one to four, the creature does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm uh, sure I know the spell being used for that. So you can make your charisma. I think yours is lower because you were hit by the smaller creature. So your charisma save, check, save is a 15 DC. Nice. This I didn't know, but technically I don't and, know. And you have a bardic inspiration D6. That's true. D6. Yep. If I'm going to spend my inspiration because thank god it's a new session. And yep. <laughs> well, with advantage. Oh, my advantage is gone. Why is that gone? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh, there it is. And let's see about the bardic. Hey! Nice. Hey. You don't no, need it. you no longer infected. However. Fantastic. That is the end of your turn, I think. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can, because you do the save at the end of your turn. Uh, okie doke. Now, the small... Just nod at the wildfire spirit. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, all right. There's only one of the little ones left, I think. It's the only one I see. Yeah. It's the only one I see, too. Which I see one corpse right here. Oh, there's the other one. I was like, I know there was three, but I don't know where the other one is. Uh, all right. So this guy is definitely going to attack the monk in front of him. He gets two claw attacks on him. Attack one. Uh, is a miss? It's a miss. Nice. It barely misses. Attack two. Uh, that also misses. Uh, so, you were right, Vash. He was fairly confident he wouldn't get hit. Uh, that's that creature's turn. Sha'a, you're up. All right. Close. Five, 10, 15, 20, 20. Five. He will attack this guy. All right. One. So on. Twenty-eight. That'll hit. For thirteen. Is it thirteen total? Yes. Yes. How do you want to kill this guy? Oh, um, with 
the same way like I I like swipe it with like a claw and then it implodes like the body of Odain and um that's her it name, implodes Malora. our body wait wait what, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think Purdy's intending to damage you right like do you mean no it, no no it expels his body yeah it expels his <laughs> body yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Sorry, Odane, you imploded. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, the the flesh that's all like flailing around, and all the mouths then are screaming, and the eyes turning towards you. They just go limp, and sort of like slosh to the ground. And Odane's unconscious body is laying there, and Melora's standing there, like catching her breath, getting her bearings, and what's going on. Okay. Now I'm going to move 30, 35, 40, 45, and attack this guy. This guy right here? Yeah. All right. I'm going to help our our new friends. That's a hit. For nine. And then... I'm gonna make it move, so the my friends will lunge at it. All right, and it has to make a strength save. It fails, and nice. it's pushed it, back fifteen. Fifteen feet. feet. Go oh. back from whence you flew away. Are uh, right there? No. But you can push him in whatever direction? direction he wants. Yeah. yeah. Push, pick the direction. So right there is fine. We've already tried this before. They just come back. But at least he's out of I know, but... <laughs> right. I'll give him uh, like a dex save to see if he can grab onto the edge. Nice. Uh, I'll say his DC is 15. Fails. Uh, and falls. Into the uh, abyss. Uh, it'll be another round before you can come back. Uh, All right. And I'm going to move closer and see that Odain's body is, like, on the floor. So I'm going to use a bonus action. You still have movement left? Jesus. Yeah, how much yeah, movement I have 55, do you have, dude? I have 55, <laughs> and I only use 45 he's, or something. He's a centaur monk. Oh, <laughs> of course he has that much <laughs> right on hopefully this will heal him so I'm gonna cast um healing words as a bonus action alright and it's uh, an evocation yeah make an arcana check that's interesting oh, shoot. Heal him we're doing an arcana evocation what healing is kind of seems kind of odd yeah We'll see. Maybe extra heals him. That'll be cool. Uh, or he'll... Wait, it's 10 Ooh, plus 1. That's enough. It's a that's success. A success. Yeah, yeah, it's a success. That's okay. enough. Um, now, let's see here. Roll me... Uh, okay. Uh, one, roll me a d6 and a d10. d6... D10. Five and eight. All right. So it lasts for five rounds. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the area of effect is eight feet. Uh, so, okay. How much do you heal him for? Oh, yeah. That's. How much is a first level spell? If, it, it a... if it's eight feet, does it also get Melora? I've only been counting it if it gets the 10. Uh, like this was one of Ella's that she rolled a ten on, I think, and I count. I basically, it hits four squares when you do that. Uh, for six. For six, but six you will. Six per round for five rounds. Should yeah, be <laughs> yeah, you'll heal six around for five rounds. So. If you stand over there or out of him. I mean, uh, let's see how healing wind works. Creature that you can see. 
Uh, yeah, I think if you stand in the same spot, I got treated the same way I treated Eldritch Blast, I think. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, Eldritch Blast targets a creature. So and this targets word. a creature, so... Yeah. Yeah. But so, this, but so whoever heard the healing word will get the. Well, it's a target. Fire it's a target you can see. It's a creature you can see. So, the way I see it's it is, he thing. says he says whatever the healing word is, and whoever stands there just hears the echo of it for five rounds, and it heals them every time. I think yeah. that you owe me you word for this human. Yeah. You owe me you <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the way I would racist. see it. It's, have you or guys... Odane could hear the echo in his ears. I don't know. I think what you said makes sense. Have you, it reminds me of like uh, at my college campus. There was this place you could stand where there's like a, a bunch of bricks and like an arch. And if you're standing right in the center and you speak, you could hear your voice echoing back and it amplifies it because it's like an acoustic area. But if you mm -hmm. move slightly in any direction, the echo goes away. I kind of kind of think oh. of it like that, like uh, it's you know one of the traits of the realms of chaos, I guess. Um, Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So you get so your is six it echoing HP. echoing in his ears or in that spot? In that spot, yeah. Okay. Um, and if you stay in that, so you wake up on the ground. You come to you on the ground. It's, you're not hurting anymore. Malor is looking down at you. You hear a centaur shouting that you owe them. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. What else you got, Shaw? Is that the end of your turn? Uh, um, that's the end of my turn. Right on. <laughs> Good turn. Issue. Uh, let's see here. Issue. One, two, three, four, five, six. And... Um, I think we'll just have him make the Arcana check. And he succeeds and casts Firebolt at this guy back here in the back that's got the dude all tangled up. Uh, nice. And I think he's within range. It's 120 feet, so yeah. He's His Firebolts are legendary. Uh, he just manages to hit. For 21 fire damage. Oh, um, Jesus. Um, oh, actually, I gotta roll his D because it's evocation, right? Firebolt is. Right. Yeah, D6 and D10. D6, D10, yeah. Yeah. Roll one D6, roll one D10. Ooh, look at that. Uh, so he rolled, he hit the 10, so it's going to hit this whole area, which means the monk is going to take damage to you. Oh, <laughs> poor uh, guy. Um, so let me take 21 off of his health also. Uh, well done issue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to last for three rounds. Um, it's yeah, just 60 damage. No biggie. Yeah. Uh, here, we're I can move. Put that to the back there. Uh, <laughs> no, he can't. He's engulfed. <laughs> we need, no, the the big guy. Oh yeah, yeah. He probably will move. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it's unless, the issue's turn. Unless it doesn't move, and then Sha can uh, stun it in that spot. <laughs> well, Lyram, <laughs> it's your turn again, bud. It is Lyram's turn. Lyrum would like to take a turn. Lyrum is far away from things. <laughs> Lyrum runs decently, but not that well. Um, um, let me fix this thing, cause I, I know, I'm sure you notice I remade your tower. Yeah. There. Do you, what do you think of that token for your tower? Would that work for you? Uh, I had it. It's supposed to be a cube. Is it okay? I'm not round, but other. It looks good. But if it was cube, that would probably be better. All right, I'll remake it as a cube. I made it just before we started today, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's right. fun. 
Go ahead. I think the Lyrum doesn't care all that much about accidentally hitting this guy. So he's going to shoot a fireball to right here, right in between these two. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're going to try to hit... Four. You're going to try to hit uh, both of them. It's going to hit the monk that's engulfed, too, is what you're saying. He's not too worried about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Arcana. Make Making your, friends. Yeah, make your Arcana check first. Oh, yeah. It's 10 plus... Ooh. Casting at third level, right? So it's DC 13. Fourth level. Okay, so DC 14. Uh, you pass. Uh, nice. Pass. Now roll a D6 and a D10. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. If he had rolled lower for the Arcana, could he have applied the Bardic Inspiration to it? Yeah. Is that a check? check. Yeah, it's a yeah. check. So yeah. five and eight. Okay, so it's going to last for five rounds. It's just going to, that whole area is going to explode for five rounds. <laughs> and what's uh, the eight? Uh, the eight is like, uh, how, how, feet? how, yeah, let me, let me see how they word it on the, or is it eight times big? <laughs> Way bigger, yeah. It, 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 let me see how it's worded here. If it's eight uh, times bigger, I think that we're gonna have a bit of a problem. If it's, okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's what it says: If its area of effect is normally one target or self, it affects the area one d one to ten feet in radius. So it doesn't apply on AOE spells. Okay. On fire. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't you, just burn down. That's my bad. The whole everything map. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess I also shouldn't have made the tiny hut bigger because it's the same thing. Um, okay. It was but, funny to have a hut, though. Yeah, but, it was funny to have the hut. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it is normally an instantaneous spell, so it does last for five rounds. Um, okay, so they're going to take... They got to make dex saves. So the beast makes a dex save. The monk will make his dex save. <laughs> Uh, and the small chaos beast that's floating in the void will make his deck save. DC 16 and fail. The monks succeed. The two monsters fail. The monk succeeds. Okay. That's good. Um, so the monsters take 21 fire. Oh, I forgot something. There's this. They have this. The big one. Uh, the big one has this and this. The small one has just the just the magic resistance. Okay, so he does get they do get advantage, so Okay. Uh let me check what they rolled. They the first one, the big one, would have succeeded for half. And then avoidance let him lets him take zero. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the monk just takes half the damage. <laughs> Yeah. So let me hang on one good. second. Um, he gets the small, in to help. The gets small to a least, fireball and then a fireball. At least the fireball is gonna hit five more times. <laughs> the uh, the small yeah, one the small one got the advantage, but he still <laughs> failed. Um, and takes, well, that one's like falling way below, isn't it? Yeah, but they were gonna teleport back. It just takes him around. Um, and they're still okay. within. Range oh, of you're the gonna hit that thing. monk too. Yeah, I didn't really think this through too well. <sighs> you didn't want to push it out one more this time. Yeah, he, yeah, I probably would have. Yeah. So I didn't really think through it like fully. This? Do we know that the monks are yeah friendly? I mean, everything. Well, I've seen them try to attack the the things that we're yeah. fighting, so I think I could. It's assume. like when nightmare creatures show up, everything that doesn't look like a nightmare creature is your ally. <laughs> Yeah. Well, or your I mean, ally until they prove themselves your enemy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of like how your characters would interpret things, too, because you guys just met one of these guys that was carrying a sword, and he attacked mm -hmm. you. He turned into a frog. And attacked but he turned you. into a frog. But yeah. we, also, we also met some of these guys before we even came into the tower. Fiwa of the people. Yep. And none of them had weapons on them, and these guys don't have weapons on them. So right. I think we would assume they might be actual... Right. Uh, people. Yeah, probably people. <laughs> probably don't want to piss these guys off. Um, I mean, if they can I don't get, know, they seem pretty weak. If they can get 
<laughs> well, these guys, yeah, but they're not, <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't met their anarch yet or whatever. So, uh, yeah, we can kill all of them. We can take them. All right. So the small guy still takes the damage. Then the the gith saved and takes half of twenty one, which is ten. Uh, okay, he's not looking so great. <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so what else do you got, Tim? Then I'm just going to start moving and try to get a little closer. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And that's my turn. All right. Um, let me put a turn tracker on this if I can. I don't think I can. So here's what I'll do. Five. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, Dane. You're conscious. You're prone. And then back to normal. Yeah, um, right. yeah, you're back to normal. Do I see this thing or is it gone? Uh, it's it's there. It's like... I get, I get, well, it's Wait. fallen over the edge, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, that's what I said. Yeah, it's fallen over the edge. So yeah, you probably can't see it. It was just in I range of like the it... fireball. So I let I let the fireball hit it. So. I feel like the fireball only hit it because it has a big radius effect. Yeah. So it kind of went all the way down. Yeah, that sounds fair. They're supposed to when they go over the. Yeah, he failed to save to catch the edge. So when they go over the edge, they're supposed to fall instantly. So, he would be down quite a ways. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when this fireball go fireball goes off, does it scorch all this flesh terrain? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and the flesh burns and blackens and turns red and yeah, like Is some. Is there of the any sort of reaction to the acid? Uh, I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, the, of acid it, we've seen that doing damage to them as they walk <laughs> through it. So. Yeah, I mean, some of it probably ignites. And just like burns, uh, acid tends to be kind of flammable. I think um, combustible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some of it does. Um, I'm not gonna like have it damage them or anything. I think the monks take it <laughs> enough damage. I don't want to. Well, just... the monks, the, the monks are far enough away unless you give it a big explosion radius. All right, I tell you what. I'll, I'll give it 3d6 acid damage. How about that? <laughs> Five damage. There you go. <clears throat> All right, Odin. Did you want to stand up? Stand up? Yeah, you were prone, right? Yeah, you're prone. Yeah. Um, can I kick this thing off the ledge? I, like, stand up, like, annoyed by it, and I see it's, like, dead. It's, we're on a cliff, right? Yeah, you're on like a like a five foot ledge. It's kind of like halfway on, halfway off. Can I just like as a free action kick it off? Yeah, sure. It slides. Sure. It slides down <laughs> the the ledge. <laughs> nah, Mama, are you okay? Yeah. How about you? Uh, could be better. Who are these guys? He points to the gets. The gift. Um, yeah. Friends. She, she she shrugs and she goes, "I hope so." She like cheap are these friends? <laughs> I believe so. We saw them when Aga uh, when Agape was here. Was there by the stairs? Uh, then I, then thanks for coming to help us. He turns to the farthest one, uh, that one that has the monk, and he's going to cast Eldritch Blast on it. This guy? Yep. All right. Make your Arcana check. Arcana check. Where is it? Uh, ooh. Oh, no. Buddy. Thanks for the help. Continues to pelt them. Uh, okay, so the spell fails. Um, magic surge? Yeah, magic surge occurs. Wild magic surge. We have Is that 1d100? 
Yeah, did we have the table still from last time? Where was that? I linked it. I don't remember. I can find it again. <laughs> Wild oh, magic. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I found it. Let me roll d100. Uh, okay. 70 and that. Each creature within the 30 feet of you become invisible oh, for the nice. next minute. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Just, does it does it specify is it like greater invisibility or like are you literally just they, invisible even if whenever, you attack? Whenever they attack or cast a spell it ends. So oh, every, okay, okay. Normal, so it's normal. normal invisibility. Everyone within 30 feet of you. So that's Vash, <laughs> uh, the Gith, Melora, Shaw, Lyrum. Uh, okay, <laughs> so let's start putting ninja marks on all those people. Uh, there's that. Melora. That's probably one of the best wild magic sages you could get right now. <laughs> right, right. Probably. Maybe. Or ninja would be like, that's not what I tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Hello, are you still there? I'm I'm here. Where did you go? I'm still here. You disintegrated. Don't know what I did. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so We're all souls now. Some of you guys got two ninja marks, so I'll take I'll take one off. You're not wait. There we go. Oh no, that was weird. Uh alright. <laughs> what else do you got, oh dude? Um that ends my turn. Alright. <laughs> Good turn. I um, was gonna ask if you had any bardic inspiration to give to anybody, but you can't see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you could see bardic, Marlin, but... bardic inspiration is here, not see. Ooh, oh, you're right. You're right. Um. Okay. Well, some Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, calm down. <laughs> uh, oh, do I get six health? Yes, you do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wouldn't it be on Shaw's terms? That's right. It would be on Shaw's terms. Oh, yeah, turn. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, Odin. <laughs> Soon, though. Uh, I guess Melora is going to move. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to link this again just in case we need it. Oh, okay, I see. You should put that in the Discord and pin it. Yeah, I just did. Okay. Well, oh. I didn't pin it, but... I had it favorited. I just didn't remember that I had it favorited. There we go. Uh, okay, so Melora's gonna move there. And... Hmm. Try to... Cast a spell. Her sheet is broken, though, and I can't see her spells for some reason. Because she's invisible. There we go. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. Is everyone else's roll twenties? doing fine yeah yeah, yeah my, mine's, mine's, fine. mine's been fine mine's good for the most i feel really really bad for this uh people <laughs> all right she's so gonna try to get... there's no way he makes it out yeah there's pretty much no way he's gonna get out of there alive <laughs> she's gonna try to cast a spell <laughs> Uh, she succeeds, and she casts this. Uh, okay, so she's <laughs> flurry of she's no longer She's no longer invisible. Yeah, okay. She'll drop Oops. invisibility. And uh, let's see here. Each creature in a five-foot radius sphere centered on that point. She's going to target... She's gonna try not to hit the the friendly guy. Yeah, she's gonna target that point. Um, 
Must succeed on a dex save. Creature takes uh, failed or half as much on a success. Okay, so dex save. From... With advantage, and if he succeeds, no damage. It's just gonna swap back and forth. <laughs> ice damage, fire damage, ice damage, fire damage. <laughs> he does succeed and takes no damage. Yeah. And it's nice. evocation. Snilix. Oh, yeah, so she gets her d6 and d10. So Wait. She might hit him anyways. <laughs> Uh, it's an AOE, so she just gets the deuce. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it lasts for three rounds. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll copy this, paste it there, give it three rounds. Okay. Uh, that is her turn. Orlin. Great. Orlin's not sure what Odane just did, but all of her friends are <laughs> gone for a moment until Melora suddenly appears, so she's a little relieved. And then, um, she's just gonna Eldritch Blast this guy. Alright. Arcana check. Uh, that's a fail. Again. Oh. Wow. Alright. <laughs> I'm going bad today. Um, all I'm just gonna do, because I, I think, um, yeah, Melora's out of range, so I can't get her <laughs> Bardic Inspiration. I have no idea where the others are, so I'm not gonna try and give others, uh, Bardic Inspiration if I don't know they're in range. So, yeah, that's it. Alright. Uh, the creature starts its turn, that means the monk in its belly takes damage. Um, okay. Oh, also at the end of your turn, Orlin, this one, this spell over here disappears. Uh, this one's got one round left on it. This one here also disappears. And that is it for now. All right. Let's roll damage on the monk in his belly. 48 plus 6. He takes 28 damage and dies. Um, the creature is going to move. Let's go five. Isn't there something that happens if it dies while infected? Uh, no. no. It's only if it's so they didn't get zero. it. Yeah, it's only if its wisdom reaches zero, then it turns into. One. Oh right, right. Okay. Now that was twenty, right? Five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, five, ten, yeah. fifteen, twenty. Then oh no. He will then use yeah. engulf. And he can move another 20 feet. He's going to get all of them, isn't he? So yeah. Could he get... He couldn't get all of them. Like, he can't get... He can get those two people. Can he only go in a straight line? Uh, it it's, doesn't... He uses all of its movement, right? He just moves... He just gets to move up to his speed, which is 20. But he's not big enough to get Lyrum and Melora and that, that monk. You know, he's only got four squares. So like he can go here, he can go here, but he can't. He can't. If he gets Lyrum, he gets nobody else, right? So he has to get. He has to get those two. Uh, so Melora and that monk get Dex saves. The DC is 18. Uh, here's the monk's Dex save. And Melora's. Oh, monk saves fine. Melora. Uh, also save. So they are pushed. Uh, instead, they are pushed away. Um, I'll go there. The monk will go there. And I don't know why I moved that token with it. That should be back there. Uh, okay. And I think that's the creature's turn. Oh, gosh. Make sure. Yeah, I think it's his turn. I'll take the body out just because it's kind of confusing things, so I'll just put the corpse right there. 
Uh, all right, now it's these monks' turns. The one right next to it is just gonna start punching. Oh, that's smart. Yep. Uh, it's a miss and a miss. Guess you gotta hit it to actually be infected. Yep. Uh, and then the this other monk here is gonna run up beside Melora and start punching. I mean, they they had the one spell, but they only get one use of it a day, so no, all their other stuff is not particularly useful right now. So, two punches. He does, but not particularly smart. He is invisible, so the first one has advantage, right? First attack would, yeah. Yeah. For 25, he drops some visibility. Uh, okay. So the first one. Make a save, doesn't he? Yeah, he will. He's going to hit first, though. Um, Ooh, wow. Yeah, so he does 2d6 plus 4 bludgeoning plus 3d8 psychic damage. So he does. 33 uh, 33 damage when he connects with his fist you see like a ripple of energy extend through the flesh of the creature uh, and then he has to make a charisma save uh, his charisma is not good uh, and he fails and his uh he looks down at his fist after hitting it and grits his teeth as you see the skin around his knuckle starting to flay itself and come off. He starts screaming in pain. Oh, God. Uh, and I guess that will... Let, I mean, let's see, I guess. He still technically could make another attack, so I'll just roll the d8 and see what happens. On a three, creature does nothing. Uh, and I guess he gets to repeat the save at the end of his turn. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, it's a, he, it's a slim chance that they'll succeed. They only have a plus one. It's at 18, so he fails. Um, and then his wisdom is going to be reduced by one. All right, Vash, you're up. Didn't he just get infected? He did. Isn't it for every whole round you uh, lose the wisdom? That's what it says, isn't it? Yeah, it's I yeah missed. each each round. Yeah, you're right. So I gotta wait before I start killing him. <laughs> also, when when he starts screaming, can I have Orlan call out? Um, your, your mind is a sword! You can cut the pain like paper! <laughs> yeah, th this one like just tilts its head and looks over his shoulder at you. Like he kind of tilts, <laughs> tilts his head and cocks an eyebrow. <laughs> That's all I want. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> right. Vash, you're up. Smash, or Vash just mutters to uh, the Wildfire Spirit. That was a wholly unpleasant experience. I need to get the hell out of here. How tall is your tower, Tim? It's uh. My tower is twenty feet tall. There you feet. go. Okay. I dare remember if it was ten by default or twenty. Like two floors. I guess I will circle around, trying to figure out what the hell's going on since I turned back. You can only see Melora. <laughs> yeah, and, and, right. the, and the other monk that's beside And Orlin. Orlin's yeah. over here. Yeah. Oh, no, Orlin. <laughs> okay. Your party's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, you um, see Melora and this monk, uh, these two monks alone standing down this large flesh creature. The one monk to her left is staring at his hand, which is now coming apart and screaming. <laughs> Oi. Um, I'm just gonna s no. I'm gonna keep that thing next to me. Uh, I believe it has enough range, anyways. I'm gonna bonus action shoot with the wildfire spirit. All right. 
against the uh, blob. 22 will hit. For nine fire. And then I'm going to keep it simple and just try to firebolt it. Okay, make your arcana check. Yeah. It's got to be a ten or better. That's not yeah. a ten or better. Spell fails. So I stick my hand out and a little puff of smoke comes out. I ah, hate this place. That's it. All right. Is there any place Bash doesn't hate? He was already hating on the Feywilds before we came here. <laughs> <laughs> it's my magic work, man. I thought he wanted to go to Limbo. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like it would be cool. Wolf wanted we, to go to Limbo. Yeah. Bash didn't. <laughs> So we actually got here, and it's like, oh, all these combats are a nightmare. Let's get out of here as soon as we can. Um, the uh, the creature, we, the audience, see the creature floating out in the void as, like, all of its flesh tendrils are extending in every direction, like a plant in zero G. Uh, and then it folds in on itself and vanishes. Uh, Shaw, you're up. I have a question with that wild soul thing. Was that a, like a magic spell that happened? Like uh, they, he casted like invisibility to everybody or? He was trying to cast something else. And because the magic in this place is so chaotic, um, just mm -hmm. it doesn't flow the same way here. Maybe it's not tied. Well, I guess you're a fae. So for you, it wouldn't be tied to the fountain, perhaps. Um, so it, just, it just doesn't work the same way. Like he went to cast a different spell. You might even recognize that it was a different spell. It should have been a simple cantrip. Uh, okay. And it just, yeah, it just went crazy. It was unpredictable effects. So I see all of these creatures over here. Like, I see Lyrum over there. Lyrum. Lyrum. Oh, Lyrum. Yeah, Lyrum. That blind sight. Oh, oh, oh yeah. right, right. Ten foot blind sight. You would see him and Odin. Well, no, not Odin. <laughs> So I don't think like he made an effect on him. Yeah. That's what Shaw is thinking. So he's gonna sneakily move toward Melora and tell her, um, do you consent on me um, taking you away far from that flesh creature? You might be eaten again. Hmm. And I, and I grab her. Uh, Melora says, no, we stand and fight. I tell this to Lyrum, too. Um, okay, um, Lyrum, do you want me to grab you? Tim's muted, or probably not there. <laughs> no, Lyrum just doesn't acknowledge him. Alright, so he just grabs Lyrum. Because... <laughs> it seems like a yes to me. <laughs> okay, alright. A non-answer is an answer. <laughs> right. Is that a grapple? <laughs> uh, Lyrum would like to contest it if it is a grapple. He's, he's contesting it, so I think that makes but it... But you can't see him, though. That's the thing. I feel like I would feel someone grabbing me. You also don't That's see true. me. Oh, I can see you, but you can't see His me. Blind sight. Oh, yeah. So, uh, grapple is an acrobatics? Uh, it's strength. Your strength. If you're grappling, it's your, your athletics versus my oh, acrobatics. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. So the person Yikes. escaping can All use right. either, either one. I have advantage on acrobatics checks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Athletics. Be a twenty. God. <laughs> uh, oh. Twenty-nine. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, nobody wants to be saved. Go, <laughs> go get eaten. Um, the rest of the 15 minutes, 55 minutes, 50. You're not gonna no. There you go. No. 
because that was an action. Yeah, but because you can grapple as, an, as part of your attack. No, I'm not attacking. I think like the idea of being invisible is actually not bad. Uh, so I'll stop here by the tower. Wait, would the grapple break the invisibility? Because it's, it's an attack, right? Isn't a grapple the same thing? Is it's it an attack? Uh, it counts as. Like, it counts as an action. action I'm looking it up. Is grappling... Because you can use it. You can grapple instead of one of your attacks. Grappling is considered a special so. attack you can do. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's when you use, you can use the attack action to make a special melee attack, a grapple. So yeah, it's a, it's an attack, so that would break your invisibility. But isn't it considered also an action? Or is it just an attack action? It's an action, yeah. Yeah, but is it considered an attack action? Yeah, I think that's what, okay. from, what, from what I'm seeing. And if I'm wrong, somebody correct me, but like, I just Googled it, and that's the first thing that popped up. Grappling is a special sure. attack. It lets you forgo dealing damage in favor of holding an enemy in place. That's a grappling attack. And that's what mm -hmm. I see too. Yes, yeah. yeah. Grapples and shoves count as attacks, is what I'm seeing. Yeah, because I see it in the PHB um, grapple. The target will last move more than one size larger than it must be within your reach. Do you see target the grappling check of strength, athletic check, contested by the strength, box check. Okay, yeah, so it sees me the moment I try to grapple. But I'm no longer invisible, but I'm gonna start running away. Alright, you start to run. It does mm. have reach. It does. It loves reach. Go ahead and move one square at a time. I mean, it can only attack once, but... Oh. 20. 25. Alright, so when you go to move out of that square is when it's going to attack you. It's a lot of reach. Now, yeah, it's got 15 foot reach. Um, here's my question. Could I use the engulf as the reaction attack? I use your reaction. movement, isn't it? Reaction is only an attack. Yeah, you can't move without an opportunity attack. Well, like the yeah, the move is part of the, like so. Its action is I engulf, don't, right. Like it has, I don't think it it could unless it had readied that as a as a reaction. That's that could be true. Um, so I'm looking at opportunity attacks in the combat. Thing in a fight everyone. You can make it's an opportunity attack. Is it, yeah. uh, so, I think opportunity attacks have to be melee weapon weapon attacks, right? Unless right. And it right. doesn't unless it doesn't, you have something like the warcaster feet. Yeah, it doesn't. Engulf doesn't say melee weapon attack on it, whereas the other attack does. So I'm just going to use the other attack on you. Super mm. good. Um. All right. So here's the claw. Oh no! Oh, wow. It's all. Oh, it's a one. It rolls a crit one. Um, that's interesting. Uh, so let's roll damage on itself. Uh, for sixteen. So, uh, in its insanity and ferocity, uh, one of the tentacles reaches out to swipe at you, and then one of its own mouths bite it off. Uh, and it damages itself. Uh, yeah, you're fine. You can keep moving. Five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five. Jail everybody. Um, also, Odane, heal yourself for another six because it's Shaw's turn. So I stop here by the tower. That's it for my turn. All right. Issue. Let's see here. On Issue's turn, this thing disappears. Um, 
For the healing, is it the same as what Shaw rolled before? Because I think when a creature had stayed in where Ishu and Orlin had done their uh, Firebolt and uh, Eldritch Blast, you had us re-roll our damage. Oh, okay. All right. Well, re-roll your healing word then, Shaw. Okay. Let's see if you get more, more than it. more than six or less. More. All right, yay! <laughs> All right, so you get another two. Uh, but... And then you hear, "You owe me, human." <laughs> yeah, you, yeah hear, you, hear, you hear the echo again. Echo. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Issue. Let's see here. He's already used his big spell. I think that's the one that failed. Well. Hmm. I think we're just going to try to keep it simple. Make an arcana check. He succeeds. Cast Firebolt. When I tried that, it didn't work. <laughs> he has a plus four. <laughs> he has a plus four to Arcana. He knows more about magic than you, Vash. Bullshit. <laughs> um, so it hits for uh, 18. Creature is officially bloodied. And let me roll his D6 and his D10. Three rounds. Uh, and it's a small one. Okay. And that's Ishu's turn. Lyron, you're up. Lyron is going to do his incredibly complicated secret wizard strategy of running at them with a sword. Alright. <laughs> I'll step up and, I mean, I guess the fireball goes off again. Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> I'll step up and take a swing with my shadow. Alright. Advantage, because you're invisible. 18. 18 hit? Uh, 18 is just enough to hit, yeah. Just enough to hit. Alright. 24 psychic. Alright. And I'll take a green flame blade swing. I don't know why I rolled that first, but I guess I have to... Okay, it'll hit, uh, okay. but I have to roll to make sure that the flame blade is casting. Okay. Um, okay, the flame blade casts. All right, so it does eight fire By plus... By the way, and plus 25. the green flame blade, you can add the d6 inspiration to your damage if you want. Yeah, why not? Let's roll the d6. All right, this is 33 plus four, so 37 damage. 37 on the second one, yeah. All right. So it's 61 total. Gotcha. It's it's starting to look pretty rough. And he'll step to the side a little bit, but not out of the reach. All right, and your invisibility is gone. Okay. That's my turn. And your green, green dot. Yeah. Green dot. There okay. we go. Uh, all right. Good turn. Odin. I don't know where this voice is coming from. <laughs> <It's there. laughs> he, can, like, he, he knows it's Shaw's voice, but he knows Shaw like right off that way. Um, <laughs> Annoying, but strangely invigorating. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you shy, though, because his invisibility is gone. Um, but he's not going to want to touch that thing, because the last time he tried, it didn't end well for him. So he's just going to shoot another LG blast at it. All right, make your arcana check. He sees 10. And maybe this time he won't make everyone invisible. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, success. Nice. Cool. Uh, this doesn't hurt that much, but... Um, okay. Four. Oh. So is the first one good. is the first one advantage? Uh, because you're invisible. Invisible, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Roll the attack roll again. 
Oh no, okay, so it misses. Good thing. It's not a crit one because you had an advantage. Uh, yeah, okay. tw 12 does but not hit. Um, do you also get three beans? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Level 11? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. All right. So roll, roll your next beam. Uh, 19 hits. Um, for 14 damage. And then 23 hits for five. So a total of 19 damage. All right, roll D6, a, a yeah d6 and a d10, please. So four rounds and six feet. Okay, I'll put that there. And let me do this so I know that one's yours, and this one I'll put a red dot on for issue. And then I'm going to reappear, and I'm going to shout out, Melora, get away, don't touch him. Yeah, she nods. And then that ends my turn. All right. She immediately touches him. Yeah, she's just immediately going to be like, <laughs> like, screw you, Odane, I'll touch it anyways if I want to. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Suddenly, um, so rebellious. <laughs> yeah, that's not war. Um, no, the little god is growing up. She will take a step back. Take another step back. She's still within range. Yeah. Uh, and hmm. Hmm. Come on, I'm trying to think of what I want to have her do here. Might might be best to keep it simple and not damage friendly folks. So <laughs> let's make her Arcana check. I'm nodding heavily. Uh. It's enough to succeed on a cantrip. Nice. Um, the cantrip, however, misses because she rolls a 17. Um, it's evocation, so I'll give her a d6 and a d10. Okay. Four rounds. And we'll give this one a blue mark for Melora. Uh, and that's her turn. Orlin, you're up. Mm. It's probably going to move, so it doesn't matter whether I want oh, to roll a one. blast it or not. <laughs> um, when it does all right. move, all these different blasts going off over and over, it's just going to look like fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, is it two Eldritch Blasts over there, or is one of those a Firebolt? <laughs> it's there's a Firebolt, an Eldritch Blast, one of everything, and a uh, Ray of Frost, and there's this giant Fireball going off over here. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think this was an Eldritch Blast. One of these was an uh, Eldritch Blast, and one of those is a Firebolt. So I think the big one is a Firebolt. Wasn't this one the the Snowstorm? That's right. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And then this one was. <laughs> There we go. So this one loses a round. There we go. Um, Orlin is going to try, she's going to keep trying to Eldritch Blast it. But all she can really do that will ensure she does damage if it hits, so. Kinda. Finally, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the first blast. Uh, 20 hits for 13. Okay, and here's the d6 and d10. Keep rolling 8s on the d10. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And, and we'll shrink this down. To put the. There we go. Second and blast was a 15. I don't. That doesn't hit, right? No, it misses. 18. You have a third one though, right? Yeah. 
23 with 11 damage. All right. It had one HP left. How do you want to kill it? Do you know her favorite way to kill things? Um, also, she was she was pushing it as she... Oh, okay. It, <laughs> cool. You remember this stuff. All right. Um, oh, wait. Because this guy's inside it, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I don't think she would have if she knew that there was a thing, a, a person inside. I don't think she would have pushed it actually. Okay. Um, just in case they're able to save whoever's inside, she doesn't want to be the reason that they can't. <laughs> this corpse is um, currently getting blown up over and over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> similar to what Shaa did when uh, he saved. Odin and Melora and it, it just exploded. She she causes this thing to explode so that the the uh the people's body uh kinda just falls to the ground as this thing explodes. Okay. Right on. Uh alright, it is very dead. Did that smaller one ever come back? Not, Not yet. yet. Alright. <laughs> um, okay, so after after I kill it, um, I'll call out, uh, keep your eye out, because I think those small ones can come back. <laughs> Alright. And uh, I guess I can't really do anything else, so I'll just wait. Just keeping an eye out for the small one. Okay. Uh, monks turn this one will hold his action this one is infected so let's see what he does an eight creature makes a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach and it reach uh its reach is five feet there's nobody within reach except for himself He attacks himself. What the hell? For... Like a force takes his fists and he just punches his face. 24. Remember, he's a blob. Yeah, yeah. This is a morphous yeah. his... blob of flesh and skin. <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> it's the same fist that he used to punch the other guy with that first started to, to become infected. Yeah, it's like Ash versus Evil Dead where his hand attack he gets attacked by his own hand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what that's what's going on here. He reaches for a chainsaw and starts to cut it off while laughing menacingly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's the monk's turn. Back. He gets saved, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. He does. He also and he loses wisdom. He, he also doesn't. loses wisdom. Um, and let's give him his save. Slim chance, but DC's 18. Oh, look at that! Hey. Oh, nice. <laughs> look at that! Wait. So, Not did he lose the, the wisdom if he still saved? No. I can't remember if you had him lose, had them lose it before the save or after. Uh, I think it's supposed to be after. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like yeah. not take off the wisdom. It's fine. Nice. Uh, he saves and comes back to himself after somehow attacking himself brings him back to, <laughs> to lucidity. Uh, yeah. All right, Vash, you're up. Um. So through the <clears throat> through the bond, I'm having a hard time doing the voice, but Vash is gonna ask Ishu if he's all right. If, he, if he's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they haven't spotted me. Do you see any more of them? Not a moment. Um, there's not really much to be done. You you could ready an action though, because Orlin did yeah. tell you that that small one might come back. Except I suck at doing anything here. Uh, sure, I'm ready. Doesn't a hurt to try. <laughs> and then out loud, I'll just call out. Is that all of them then? And that is your turn. Yep. And that is when the creature 
appears at the edge. Uh, we'll put him at this edge here. And let's see here. 20 foot movement. Oh yeah, if you're holding an action, you get to use that action. You crit on your arcana. It actually worked. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the firebolt hits for 19. Um, yeah, because of the one fire spray now. Uh, all right. How do you want to kill this guy? Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> um, Vash, like, without even really feeling like it's going to work, he just flings a hand out and kind of makes the motion to cast the spell. And he's a bit surprised when something actually comes out. Yeah. This time you Look, weren't you could do it when it really it. counts. Yeah. <laughs> this time you managed to, uh, to not think about, uh, we don't, <laughs> like the book said, right? We don't think about attacking or whatever. We just do. All right. <laughs> uh, as fire burns the wood into air, feeding it, you burn this uh, chaos beast to a crisp, and he dies. Nice. Ash just looks at his hand and goes, "I hate this place." <laughs> Oral and cheers. Good job. <laughs> Is that all of them? I'm not I sure. think so. Uh. You want me to scope the area again? Yeah, you do that. so well last time. You do that, and Orlin, uh, if we're able to, we'll end up ready in action if... <laughs> you too. Are you friendly? Uh, yeah, one of them turned towards you, and uh, he says... Uh, he says... Uh, John talk con con luck. I can't understand anything he's saying. Ah, oh, shite. I'll transfer the mind link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, transfer the mind link. Uh, and I'll just ask him, "Are you friendly?" Uh, he cocks his head towards you, and uh, your response you get is, "Are you friendly?" Yes. Good. He, like, exchanges a look with the other one. Their posture becomes less defensive. Grab um, your dead. I might be able to help you. Yeah, they nod. They wait for the explosions to stop going off. Uh, I wouldn't, but <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be not much of a corpse <laughs> Um, yeah, they might want to get the body a, out before the explosions keep fair, going on. <laughs> that's a fair point. Uh, this guy's got all of his health, so he'll run in and grab him and pull him out. Maybe take a little bit of damage. Just kind of time it. <laughs> um, yeah, he, well, I think he's your math is off feeding. Uh, also go ahead and heal Odane three more times. It is four, so it'd be 44 plus. Yeah, you're right. 16 four more times. Yeah. I'll just go ahead and delete all these spell tokens because they're not going to matter. Yeah. The fireball continues to go off four more times also. Um, Jeez. Where are you getting 16 D4, Feeny? <laughs> yeah, there's... I thought it was four times. It's... So, four times is four. Your, is your regular healing word 4D4? Yeah, 44. What? No. No, it's no. not. What is it supposed to be? Wait. When you're is it just a D4? Just oh, a D4 it was plus. just a D4. Yes. That's true. <laughs> That's 44. Yeah, so it should be <laughs> four, yeah. 44 plus 16. Right? Healing. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so just take the first, the first four. four. Yeah. That's fine. So, did, you, did you cast it at, at one level higher or not? 
No, uh, just one, just one. That's why. Oh, okay, okay. I was so, looking. Uh, cast one level higher. Twenty nine total. Right. Wait, so forty. So yeah. 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 Thirteen plus sixteen. Yeah. So I'll put that on. Uh, try not to kill any of these guys. I'm saying to my companions out loud. Uh, what do they want? Don't actually know yet, but they're not here to fight us, and we don't need any more enemies. This one uh, gestures towards this, this corpse on the ground here, and he says something out loud uh, you can't understand. I'll have the spirit land on it. No, I can't teleport corpses, can I? Uh, it has to be a willing creature, right? So I would assume not. Yeah. Uh, he's gesturing at it? Yeah, he like points at the corpse and he says something that you can't understand and then this one responds and saying something you can't understand. And then uh, in the bond, uh, this one says uh, what happened to this one? To this one? Question, does Orlin still have Comprehend Languages on? Or... Um, that, that was... only lasts an hour, and I think we rested for more than an hour, didn't we? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was a long rest. Or at least, hour? even if we rested for just one hour, then this combat would have had her go just over it. Yeah. Um... I could try to ritually cast it again, but that would be ten minutes. <laughs> uh, I will have the, the spirit perch on Vash's shoulder <clears throat> and through the bonds say, you can come and grab him. He just appeared and killed over. Yeah, There were some things chasing him. Looked like frogs. Frogs. You know what a frog is? <laughs> he, uh... He he says, uh, not familiar with the term. I'll Didn't somebody keep the sword? Transmit an image of one of the slot to him. Which one? The great uh, sword? Yeah, let's go with the death slot. Okay. He says, ah, I understand. These are the slot. They're very dangerous. Did you fight these as well? Slod. Yeah, we did. He looks over the uh, the corpse. Like he he squats down, kind of like um, he's he like bends his knees and he, like resting his elbows on his knees while he's like Orlin you know, the book, checking this guy out. Yeah, Orlin will hand the the book over. Um. Are you I'll gonna toss tell him? To the guy. Are you gonna tell him why we have it? We're talking now. Oh. He uh, you toss the book to him. Yeah, while he's squatting, just kind of a soft toss to him. Yeah, he he, like the book lands on the ground and kind of skitters close to him, and he looks down at it, and. Uh, he Want said, for him to catch it, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't even try. He doesn't even try to catch it. Um, and he says, uh, he takes a look at the book and he says, "Ah, student, oh, says. Of, student of Giji, I take it." Right. He says, uh, "Were any of you wounded by these creatures?" Ah. <sighs> Playing translator, I should go. Was anyone wounded by the uh, frogmen? They're called Slod. Thank you, Mr. Um, Melora. We took care of her. Wait, did we see if Bash got hit too? I know Bash did get hit. I don't. I don't know if he ever took care of it or if he was hiding it from us. Um, I don't remember. I know you did get. Infected. I think I did get hit, and yeah, and he hasn't fixed it yet because his magic won't work, so. Yeah. 
Because I remember Orlin was asking if you were okay, and you were just like, eh. And you turned away from me. <laughs> I think I healed Melora. Yeah, yeah you Vash saw Melora. what you did to heal her, and he's pretty sure he knows how to do it, too. So he's not too worried. It's just a matter of getting it to work. I thought you had uh, already... I guess through the bond. I thought, I thought you'd already healed yourself from that. Nope, because that's when you announced that our magic doesn't work as well as it okay. <laughs> was anymore. Um, um, so see. I guess I should just say just me. We're fine. He says, um, you're certain you're fine. What was it? Is it, what is the slot thing? It's not like a parasite, right? There's different ones. The different colors do different things. You were struck by the blue one, if I recall. Um, sure. I don't know. I the blue remember. one. I mean, I can't tell you what it does exactly without like. It'll well, I mean, like, what would Vash feel as far as like? Does it just feel like an infection? Or I described it as um, you. You could tell something was wrong. You rolled like a check to tell something was wrong. I remember you being mm -hmm. like, can I tell that it's a disease? And I was like, well, I don't think you can tell for sure that it's a disease because you've never encountered this before. So you don't really know what it is, but you know something's wrong. And I remember describing the flesh around the claw marks being like really red and tender as if the wound was infected, but this should take a lot more time to happen. Like wounds don't typically okay. get infected immediately. Um, so there was that. That's kind of, and it was painful, particularly painful and tender. I guess I'll show him the claw marks and say, it's infected, but I can fix it if I can ever. I know some restorative magics, but nothing seems to work here. <laughs> you hear like a chuckle um, in response, and he says, well, if you were, in, depending on which one, infected you you may not be able to use your res restoration magics on yourself anyways that's good to know do you know which how, how would i tell he uh he like peels back um on the corpse like part of the robes and like looks at a scratch wound that's on like the guy's torso and then he kind of like <sighs> makes like a he kind of, like tuts and like sucks air through his teeth and uh, then he looks back up at you and in your mind uh, he says um the blue ones uh the infection they give we call it the chaos phage uh, creatures infected by it can't heal themselves. But uh, it is easier to deal with, I suppose. Easier to catch, too. Great. Do you, is there anywhere in this godforsaken place that's safe? We were supposed to be looking for a city. Oh, you're looking for the city. You have business there. Yes. He kind of, his head tilts to the side. He says, uh, how did you enter? Stairwell. Through a stairwell. There's kind of like a look of relief on his face. And uh, he says, good. So you're, you're here to see the master then. That's the plan. Well, I he looks back at his uh his companion who's sort of like tending to the the body and kind of like looks up at him and then like slightly shakes his head from side to side. And then he turns back and he says, mm -hmm. "Um, all well, the guidons should help you get there. We can show you if you like." Um, he points at the uh, corpse on the ground in front of him, and he says, have you seen, it, seen any more of these? The corpse of his buddy? Yeah. Um, he says, have you seen any more of these? Yeah. And then he, and then he pauses for a second mm -hmm. and he says, have you seen any more of the people 
or if there are any others that could use our help nearby. Just the few that were guarding the stairwell. He nods. None in here. Um, yeah, he nods and, uh, he, uh, he reads. Okay. So these guys are going to show us how to get to the stupid city for the master. I said that out loud because I know they can't understand me. <laughs> yeah. And then he says in your mind, he says, um, we'll need to destroy these bodies first. They can't be saved. Uh, he says, uh, this one certainly can't. Not if he was infected. We can't take the chance. The red ones are particularly nasty, and we can't tell which one attacked him. Honey, there's the small black one. Was it two blues? A green? Yeah, and a red? Yeah. You guys fought two blues, the small gray death one. There's gray, and then there's death, which they're both gray, but you fought the death one. Um, you fought two blues, a red, a green, and a death slot. Mm -hmm. And Vash... And, and we don't know which one hit him before. Yeah. He showed up already wounded. Vash was right. hit by the blue one and infected. Sha'a was hit by the red one. Um, if I recall, the red one did get claws on Sha'a. I think so. But I'm guessing Shaw saved. You don't know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you Vash wouldn't know if he saved, right? Well, yeah. I um he looks at full health. Does he look fine? Uh I mean he looks yeah. Well, he, I'm not really that concerned with Shaw to be honest. <laughs> just just looking at him, yeah, he looks fine. <laughs> All right. Um, um, so yeah. out loud. Uh, Odain? Yeah? These things tell me that whatever that thing did to me, I'm not going to be able to cure it myself. Could I get an assist? Uh, yeah. Ooh, Same I thing has happened to Melora. I cast... I think it was less a restoration I did last time. Yep, make yeah. your arcana check. So. Yeah, if it works. DC is 12. But Dean still has Bardic Inspiration. You do. Well, let's, try, let's try the Bardic. <laughs> Get a four one, one or better. Yeah, 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 there you yeah, go. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just enough. <laughs> All right. So Vash is cured of Chaos Phage. Now, I'll go ahead and just because there is some stuff lost in translation there. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the blue slots thing and paste it so you guys can see exactly what it says for the first time. Um, yeah, just as you, can't, you just can't recover hit points um, and your hit points are reduced every 24 hours. Oh, that would have been fun. Um, I guess I would have been a green slot. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the green slots Halfway are like the ladder. Yeah, they're like the yeah, exactly. They're like the first stage of caster slots, I think. Okay. Thank you, Odin. Um, while they're doing that, Orlin's going over to Melora and asking, uh, "Do you do you want me to try healing you?" She nods. She's covered in wounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but I guess I will do my Arcana. Um, she's going to try casting the Cure Wounds at 5th <laughs> level, so I'm assuming that's 15. Ju just words? enough, yeah. 10 plus 5, right, cool. so. Nice. <laughs> um, so. Oh, hold on a second. Uh... Okay, yeah, you're fine, Odin. Okay, go ahead, Ella. Sorry. I was just checking to see if there's any special bullshit for that abjuration spell. Um, okay, and cure wounds. What kind of well, that's weird. What kind of spell is it? I think evocation. 
either okay, case. Sure. <laughs> All right. So you cast Cure Wounds. It's a success. She heals for 29. Um, roll your d6 uh, and your d10, I guess. Uh, five rounds. Uh, and... Uh, okay. It just affects her. It doesn't affect you two. Sorry. Um, but she's okay. going to heal by 29 <laughs> for five rounds. So basically... Oh, or did, I guess you can keep rolling. You don't want it. me to roll yeah, every you can time. Roll it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Roll it four more times. Right. I mean, it'll probably it'll probably heal <laughs> her to max. So, but. as Vash sees both Odane and Orlin casting spells, he's gonna say to the person, "Does this place hate natural magics? I seem to struggle more than my companions." Uh, he says, uh, "No, the place is made of natural magics." He says, um, maybe your friends are just better at calming their minds than you are. <laughs> Best kind of squint at him for a second. Uh, all right, she's at max. Okay, I won't bother rolling the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> at the front door. Thank you, Alexa. Uh, <laughs> did, did you cast it? Did you upcast it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, fifth, I cast it game. at fifth level. Okay, okay, that's right. Yeah. It's a warlock slot. All right, I was just making sure I didn't do something wrong. Well, I guess dispose of the bodies if you don't think they can be saved. We're ready to go when you are. He nods. Is everyone good? Ishu, where are you? Uh, Ishu suddenly appears. I'm here. You hurt? Uh, a bit. Not by the frog creatures, right? I don't remember what got a piece of them. I think it was one of the frog creatures, yeah. Because uh, I think he cast uh, greater invisibility at the start of this encounter. I'll check know. him for wounds that look like I had. Yeah, he probably has. I mean, there's definitely claw marks on him. Like whatever creature it was that got a piece of him, it definitely clawed him. I don't think... Well, was it that, or was it uh, this thing? I actually don't remember, but they both... I remember, I remember me and Ishu were together. We were, we were invisible. To, we went invisible together, and that was the thing that was close to us. This thing. Oh, okay. Maybe it was, but either way, it's a claw attack that these things have. Right. And it's a claw attack that the slot have, so it might look similar. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the monk says in your mind, he says, um, was anyone hit by any of the red ones? That's important. Can I examine I think... you to see what type of claw marks or yeah, make tell a... the difference between the two? Yeah, I suppose you can make a medicine or nature. Um, Wasn't Laura hit by the red one? I think she was, yeah. she was hit by the blue, one of the blue ones, I think. I think okay. the I think the red one only hit Shaw. I we think. should have put markers on us when we got hit. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. It the, with the red one uh, being the one to hit Shaw <laughs> because I know the two blue ones were like on along this side and the yeah. little was along this side. Where Shaw and I was, was here. here. I made a note that the red yeah. one had only hit Shaw, and I. I had made a note that Vash was infected, but I had already removed it because I thought he cured himself. I guess he hadn't. If, if I remember correctly, I think it was something to do like you did a constitution and then something about humanoid, and I said I was fey. I did not affect me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But, you, but you wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is yeah. everyone good? So, is it. You should, do you need some healing? I got hit by the red thing. Um, it seems to be the Chaos Beast that got a piece of Ishu, Vash. Also, okay. uh, just make, want to make a note, the, the monk is asking if anyone's hit by a red slot. And yeah, yes, I Ishu, was... Ishu would definitely like some healing. Absolutely. I'll uh, turn to him and then nod at the Sha and uh, say that he thinks he was hit by one of them. 
Why? What do the red ones do? Sorry. Sorry, could I have Ishu just like go where, like, have Melora step back and Ishu go where she was before that? (laughs) 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 she doesn't know how many times it'll do it but she wants to see you should just stand here and we'll see if it works otherwise i'll I'll try casting another spell all right let me see here (laughs) oh damn issues like totally damaged pretty hurt yeah um he does get he does get healed to max after standing there for two turns well it would just be one more turn there's only one left. left yeah um, Unless Melora got to max before I finished, because I still have one more roll too. She did get to. It only, I think it only took two to get her to max. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it was the, it was the one, the initial one that you healed with, and then two more. So maybe it would just be okay. the one. Um, but that one would be enough to put issue up to max. So. Last okay. one. Well, HP. If anyone needs any more healing, there's still one more. <laughs> oh, Dane does. Hurry. Go ahead and roll it in case anybody goes over there. <laughs> it, it's it's almost tapped out. You may. Okay. Get in there. Get that 30, <laughs> 31 wow, that was a good roll. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, this guy turns towards Shaw, and he's, he says something you can't understand. Shaw. Um, and then... What do the red ones do? He says, uh, uh, they, they use you as a host to carry one of their young, their eggs. Well, that's disgusting. He nods. So out loud, I'm just saying, Shaw, you're pregnant. Uh, pregnant? Yep, you're carrying a baby. Baby little red slot. He says, um, if you have something that cures disease, you may want to use it just in case. A shot. He starts I dragging. That'd be lesser restoration, right? Yeah, lesser restoration yeah. would do it. Sure, this is gonna go well. He starts dragging this body over to the, you. To the pit of acid. God, Focus! <laughs> Heal me! I hate this place. <laughs> yeah. You try to cast you try to cast less restoration, but you the spell slot is used and uh yeah. you feel that it just doesn't work. <sighs> Even the bark inspiration wouldn't help, which sucks. Again. Okay. Leading us somewhere. So it took two spell slots, but uh, I'll cast Lustration on Shaw. Uh, all right. Um, and yeah, he casts uh, Restoration Magic on you, Shaw. That happened. How does Shaw <sighs> feel about his place. pregnancy being terminated? <laughs> Jeez. I guess I should have asked you first. Did you want to keep it? No. Sure it you from the inside out. I don't even I don't know, know what it does. That's just making it up. <laughs> Was I even infected at the very start? Uh, you you weren't actually infected by this thing. You just you just don't know if you were or not. Right. So would wouldn't the uh, when he casts a spell, would it like know that it oh, yeah, healed or like anything. restored something? Uh, yeah, you would like when you cast the spell, you can feel that that he is healthy. There is nothing there to cure, but he should be fine. <laughs> I'm not sure my magic worked. I think it might still be in you. Yeah. Would it turn into a greater restoration if that's like a? Uh, what is less stronger magic than I have? It's evocation, so it could it could last for more than one round. If you want to roll a d6, oh, God. Uh, just keep hitting him with it. Yeah, I'll just keep hitting him. Uh, no, nope. but only, um, you, only get, you only get the one. <laughs> okay. But Vash, yeah. like uh, I know you said it, he could still be infected, but when you cast the magic, you can tell that he's healthy. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just messing with him. Okay. okay. <laughs> 
So these two Which guys... Which also, Vash isn't that great of a liar, so you might be able to tell pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these guys are dumping the corpses in the acid. Um, out loud to the others, I'm going to say, well, that seems a bit... wrong. I guess better, better to deal with them here than to possibly infect the the people. I suppose so, but you got to assume they knew each other, right? I just threw through the corpse in the. Maybe hmm. that's how they bury each other. You another. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe this is their funeral rituals. Scene. We shouldn't. Or we Touch shouldn't. Yeah, I don't all... feel well. <laughs> what you say? I think my, I feel like my energy is so low after turning into a sponge. <laughs> yeah, that um, was particularly unpleasant. Are we? Wait, are we gonna stay here another hour, or should we see if they can take us back to their people? Hold on. So, through the mine, like, how far is it to your city? Well, the distance to the city is quite far, but we'll just be going to a guide on. The guide on should take us there. So, the journey will be. How far is it to that thing? That shouldn't be no further than a few moments travel on foot. Wait, are they no, taking we should be fine, Dora. Yeah. I'm not sure he said that they offered to lead us. Oh, okay, good. Do they know anything about this creature? I can ask. I... Ash is starting to look a little put out by being the translator. He turns and... <laughs> what are these things? You mentioned the frog people are slawed. What are these called? He says, um... We call them chaos beasts. I'm translating as he tells me. What did they... They ate most of us. What happens to us? Are we also getting pregnant or something? Is there anything to worry about these from these things? Long-term effects. What is pregnant? <laughs> I'm going to let someone else explain that. <laughs> uh, that. That's when you make more of your species. It's magic, Lyra. Oh, like tinker. It's magic. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> um uh, there's this there's this whole thing with a stork and uh <laughs> um as far yeah, as like stork. what are there any long term <laughs> effects from these things he says um if there was any effect from these things left we would all know about it the he like gestures towards his his hand that's like Got, got wounds all over it now. It's like bleeding, but the skin is like come back together. Um, and uh, he says, um, if you can't shake this off, that's the effect you should worry about. So then to the others, I'll just say, I think we're probably okay with those. Okay. He says, um, were any of you affected for more than just a few seconds? I'm just I'm just gonna tell them no. I can. <laughs> you were though. Some of you lost wisdom, right, Odane? Yeah. <laughs> you just gonna tell them no. I mean, that's <laughs> oh, uh, right? I thought he meant yeah, something else, but uh, well, yeah. how, do you, how do you find how do you define a few seconds? Right. Six He's, seconds is a few seconds. He says, um, the process, the transformation you see, has a way of sapping your willpower permanently. Okay, and that means? Well, there is a way to restore it, but it requires powerful spells. Like... The uh, like the spell we just saw this one use, and he gestures towards. Uh, I guess it was Shaw that cast Lester Restoration, right? A minute ago. 
I cast uh, No, that was I no, cast not me. I, I can't cast it on Shaw. Um, oh yeah, you cast it, Wolf. Um, uh, yeah, he says he says like like this spell you just used, but more powerful. It's the only understood. Thing, it's the only thing we know that can restore that. Okay. Well, we should head out, right? There's no use staying here, just in case more come. My companions say they're ready to go. Nuts. He gestures uh, from the way they came. So, like, up. He says, um, we should head this way. The way. Uh, I guess we're following them. Let's not fall behind. Yeah, why don't you guys all group up so I can copy and paste you. And uh, here, I'll just I'll just scoot, scooch some of you folks up there, and move you like that. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our break here. What I want you guys to do on your break is I want to have somebody or a mixture of three people. I need three D threes rolled. Total or from. They can be three, just just total, three total. Yeah, they can be from three different people. Doesn't matter. I just need three d threes rolled. There's two of them rolled. It looks like. Yep. Okay. All right. So we got. We got <laughs> Thanks, so, everyone. Wait, you rolled <laughs> one of each number. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That means, there out. means there won't be any duplicates on the next map, uh, like there was on this one. So. Oh, um, it's the train. <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll go to break here. What for we're like... each thinking of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, Shaw Unrooted says Mazel Tov on the on the pregnancy, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in just uh, in just a few minutes. All right, thanks for playing, guys. Thanks for watching, folks. And we'll be back in just a minute. All right. I am here. Let's uh, let's see if these guys are here. Hello. You guys back yet? Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Hope you guys had a good break. Yes. I got food. Right on. Um. Okay. So, uh, just in case. Uh, unrooted and audience are interested. They were awarded three XP during the break for the deadly encounter. I know sometimes folks watching like to try to keep track of all that stuff to make sure we're we're staying on our game. Uh, <laughs> we're awarding <laughs> XP correctly and stuff. All right. So um, I've got the uh, the map ready. And I'm quite happy with it. Let me just do a couple of things here. Oops. Okay. Um, so, uh, you guys walk forward into the chaos, uh, which really is, is basically what's been going on the entire campaign. Um, <laughs> uh, Deadly should be six. No, Wolf. Deadly is three. Uh, hard is two. <laughs> anything less is one. Um, <laughs> that is how it works. I, you know, you'll just have to get good. Maybe if you can figure out how to cast some spells, you can earn some more experience. <laughs> 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 I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, oh, I, was good. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be roasting the shepherd of fire like that. He's sick. I'm place. gonna burn your world down. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Wolf. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, <laughs> um, so you guys walk on into the chaos. Um, 
And it, it is a few moments walk, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes. Um, these, these two leading the way seem to be much more versed uh, in uh, traveling here than you all are. Um, there's moments when you're uncertain uh, where you're walking. Maybe that seems uh, that there is no terrain in front of you. Um, but it's sort of almost like a lag in a video game, like clipping through a wall or something. The terrain starts to sort of generate and you just sort of realize suddenly that, oh, there is terrain there. Um, and after uh, a few moments, uh, you do see a structure that um, sticks up in the distance uh, pretty high, um, an obelisk shaped structure. It's, it's dark. Um, appears to be made of some sort of like an old stone, like some kind of old obsidian uh, stone. And perhaps that's why uh, you couldn't see it before is because it blends in. It's black. It blends in with the, uh, the sort of blackness of uh, the sky around you. You know, the parts of the sky that aren't totally absorbed by elements like fire and lightning. Um, the, uh, the terrain ahead of you uh, shifts from from the flesh and ice you've been walking on uh, to more of uh, sands. Uh, and the air around you does feel hot. You feel sand blowing against your skin. It's dry. It's warm. Um, but there is air, thankfully. Um, and you reach uh, this second area of limbo here now are you all talking to these guys as you're walking um is there any communication i think, or I think uh, only bash can unless i try to do comprehend languages but then only i can understand them i can't talk back to them right. oh yeah i mean as far as like demeanor goes they're kind of um they're kind of following your lead. Like you seem to be very quiet and Actually, to the point, and that's kind of how they're staying. Can't Jane cast tongues? I don't know. Can you, Odin? If he if he wanted to talk with them, I think he could with tongues. So if I didn't have to, I don't. <laughs> hmm. He said, "I don't feel like talking to him. It's fine." No. I don't. Ha I don't. I don't have the spell. Oh. Do you know Fiwa? What? Yeah. He's asking if they know Fiwa uh, from the from the gate, um, hmm. from the stairs. Uh, the uh, the one that's sort of been talking to you most, um, kind of turns back and through the mind leak he responds. Um, Yes, uh, Fiwa is considered a great warrior among our people. Hmm. Really? He nods. Indeed. Um, he's one of the few that have come close to enlightenment, from what I understand. Quite well known. Why have... Uh, He's, he says, uh, I assume you know his name. You must have met him. I How spoke with him. Interesting. How is he these days? Bash is kind of taking this in and the way he's talking about him. He was fine the day before when I saw him. It's good. Do you all know each other? Or of each other. How does your society work? <laughs> he says, uh, it's quite an assumption to make that just because we all look the same, we knew each other. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of chuckles. You know. Not so much an assumption if you knew the first one that I mentioned. Well, if he was very renowned amongst our people, like I said. Hmm. 
We all work Don't together. Remember. If that's what you mean, we... We live in the same city. We protect each other. But there are far too many for us all to speak to each other or, or know each other directly. Is, is that, and I'll point at the uh, ziggurat in the distance, is that the city? He says, um, it's the gateway to the city. That's a gateway. Is the city inside, or...? He says, um... Uh, yes. Is it so hard to believe that something so large could be inside such a small thing? Like the stairwell. Sure. Why not? Yes. It's bigger on the inside, exactly. <laughs> um, he says, uh, he says, um, the entrance is narrow, so it's easy to keep guarded from the slod. Creatures of the chaos, dragons, dreadnoughts. Dragons. You have dragons here. He nods. He says, hey, issue, they have dragons here. What? Dragons? Oh, God, we got to get out of here. I thought you'd be excited. Uh, I mean, I just like being alive. Nash is carrying on two conversations because he's an asshole. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What kind of dragons are they? What kind of dragons do you have? He says, um, well, the only one we know about nearby, we call it a chaos dragon, seems to be a creature born from the chaos of this place. Unpredictable. How is it that your people survive here? What do you mean? You mentioned the chaos of this place. We've been nothing but attacked the whole time we've been here. And we haven't been here very long. Is that different from where you come from? You know, now that I think about it, not really so much. But at least there, uh, when I try and cast a spell, it works. <laughs> yes. This place... It's malleable. Order hasn't been given to it like other places. Order hasn't been given to it. Hmm. Well, everything was born from the formless chaos. Sure, of course. He, uh, he says, I haven't traveled to other worlds myself, but from the stories I've heard, um, other worlds have been given certain rules, certain laws, I suppose. Uh, this place laws is still... It's still like... A blank slate here. Sort of, um, well, I never thought about it like this, but I guess you could consider it like a sort of neutral territory. Interesting. Uh, so out loud to issue, he's gonna say, uh, a great and mighty. Chaos Dragon. What? That sounds insane. What color Apparently is it? Apparently it only eats kobolds. I hate this place. And me too. <laughs> and then uh, in the bond, I'm going to say, this is my third world. 
I think. And I gotta tell you, definitely my least favorite. <laughs> Laughs. Um, he says, uh, the trick about this place, and we're taught this from early in our lives. <laughs> it's a reflection of you. The realm itself is a mirror of sorts. He says, um, I can understand that it could be different, maybe hard to become accustomed to, but perhaps the problem you have with this place is something that resides within you, something you need to work out. Not so good at clearing my mind. Hmm. Thinking keeps me alive. For not to be airheaded. As it, does, as it does with most things, I suppose. Thinking can keep you alive, sure. It can also get you killed. Here, at least. Uh, and then, can I, um, Melora? You you ask for Melora. Yeah, she turns around. What? How much do it? you know of the material plane? Or I guess whatever we would know it as. Um. Uh, what do you What do you mean? <laughs> um, I don't know a lot of human history. If that's what you're asking. More specifically about the Arcana and the forming of the world. Bits, I suppose. Did that place look like this place before the Arcana? <laughs> she says, uh, I don't remember that place ever looking anything like this. <laughs> we always had an well, we always had a world, you know, solid ground that you could stand on, air that you could breathe, water you could swim through. Things didn't change rapidly and without no, not reason. Like, not like this. It was just a hunch. Yeah, she nods. And uh, she kind of like gives you a concerned look and uh, she turns back and s starts saying something to Odin. Like maybe they were in the middle of a conversation or something. Unless you've got. Depending on how far it is to. Yeah, I'm just no, giving. No, that, that was it. I'm just giving you guys all the room to talk that you would like. Um, take three for RP. Cool. Um, Would anybody else like to talk to each other or ask Wolf to ask them something or anything like that? I think Lyrim is just kind of confused. Just looking around. Was he, was he gonna keep asking questions about pregnancy or did that die down? No, he wasn't too interested. He realized it was a, it was a an organic thing, and that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> that means I could do what I wanted for Orlin. You're just admiring your bow. Um. Yeah, she's admiring her bow, like feeling, because its branches twine together. So she's just like feeling it, getting to to know how it feels in her hands better um and just keeping an eye out she's being extra vigilant for enemies because she wants to keep shooting it <laughs> yeah is this obvious your fascination with this bow <laughs> probably i mean she's not trying to hide it did you say the name of that again 
Wi Willowy Kellen here. Willowy? Wi wi uh. Laura. <laughs> Laura goes, Willowy Keller in here? <laughs> I, no, I think it's Willow, Willowy call, calling him. No, it's Will, Willow E. Colin here. <laughs> Willow, Willow will not she shoot us with it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, so, where did you say you got that from? Obron? Uh, yeah. Well, um, not, not, um, I mean, he was in a tree. He was a Wait, tree. He's, he's also a tree? Not just the order of my cat? Is he always a tree? He, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, hear him, but he responded, um, As I would expect my my lord to to have responded, I guess. Um, Are you sure it's and, him and not some other random uh, tree? As, oh, it feels it feels it feels like his magic. Or something nefarious. I've noticed you staring at that a lot. Wait, so Orlin, if if Oberon is alive in a tree. Tree, then why are then he must be alive in other places? Why do we need to? Is there another way to resurrect him apart from this orb? Question. Oral and looks at Melora. <laughs> the question is if there's another way to resurrect Oberon besides the orb, or if yeah. he's already alive. Another question is, how is he able to manifest in a tree if he is well, he's, essentially he's, an orb right yeah, now? Yeah, if he's supposed to be, like, dead or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's of the wilderness, and, you, you know, the orb's still alive, so maybe it puts off um, enough of his his magic and and presence <laughs> that but it you went affects away from the orb, tree. Right? I mean, you went off into the woods. Well, um, first I prayed to it, to to him through it. <laughs> she Malora, looks at Malora. <laughs> Malora kind of, Malora's like listening to you guys, and she's like kind of smirking. And she chuckles a little bit, and she says, uh, "And <laughs> she says, um, no, <laughs> silly gods don't work like mortals do." Just because Oberon isn't there, she kind of shakes her head. Oberon's also, he may be a, a being, sure, but he's also a, like a force of nature. His influence exists anywhere that the wild magic of the Fae does. Perhaps even, well, the Master built that place. To represent the Fae, maybe, maybe he was able to tap into something, even if it was just an imitation. It is a little weird, though, because when we walked in, I didn't, I didn't feel like we were in the Fae Wilds. It looks like it, but it doesn't feel like it. She nods. Yeah, I felt it too. It was just something kind of off. Couldn't quite a facsimile. But. But somehow his his presence came through, and as um as uh our conversation ended, um I did hear his voice a little bit, well, through Faya, Faya um helped with that. Where is your dragon? Um, you know how. Agape said we might get separated. I figured it would just be better to keep Fair um in its own little space until it's time to to pull Fair out. Uh are you all talking out loud? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you say the you say the word agape and both of the guys you're following turn and look at you. 
and keep continue. So they stop. Uh, I mean, they keep walking, but they're like they're they just they're just suddenly fixated on what you're saying. They hear they heard the word agape and they recognized it. And <laughs> I don't know anything else. Yeah, they don't. They they heard one thing. They heard one word. They recognized, and so they they like turn and look. <laughs> Sure. Like suddenly they're paying attention to what you're saying. Uh, what I I figure I, I can summon Fair back um, when we're in somewhere more stable or something. Maybe before we meet with the wizard, if if uh, we need to. Well, yeah, I'm still a little con- I'm still a little confused on whether. Oberon has an effect on things. If he has right. power elsewhere, then He's couldn't he the, the thing. have helped us if, earlier? <laughs> I I think if he was truly gone, I wouldn't be able to do magic anymore. Well, if he's not truly gone and he still has influence, what do we need to bring him back for? Mm, well, because if if we don't bring him back, then maybe he will still dissipate. We want him strong, full force, strong. We want him here. Well, not here, here, but uh, to save the Feywilds. <laughs> it's right. worth sacrificing Odain. Melora chuckles again. She goes, he needs, his, he needs an avatar. That's what he needs. His needs are not paramount. <laughs> Well, someone has to fight off the incursion, don't they? There's no one better in all of the Feywild to do it. You just give a bunch of those bows out. Yeah. uh, If he's able to manifest a bow, could he help the rest of us? Um, I can try (laughs) to him and, and see, but I think we should be in a place that has a bit more vegetation. It just doesn't... If he's not dead dead, and he has some influence, is it really worth sacrificing Odain to try and bring him back to his avatar? Melora stops smiling. Well, here some seems to think that we need to bring him back. Orlin he, seems to think the same thing. That's because Harrison doesn't want to step up. Hey, human, you still owe me. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna sacrifice yourself. That's how you should pay me. Quite the debt. What? <clears throat> I'm hearing that people are dying or something. Do you agree to that in writing beforehand, Odin? Wait, huh? Why do you, you I oh, So you're telling me to die, sheep, right now? When the time comes when Oberon needs, needs a body or something, I don't understand what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of this. The Omen. Laura shakes her head. Why? Oberon's not taking his body. Yeah, he's not taking my body. Just we're voice. just... We're just taking this orb from my body so we can use the orb to resurrect Oberon. And he looks at Melora, right? That's how that works? She nods, and then she says, "And yes, and his body will be shattered in the process. You know, this place doesn't seem to work like the others. Is there any chance that taking it out here would have a better effect? What if it doesn't work? We lose Odane. Melora we lose Odane either way. Melora's shaking her head. No, it has to be done at his tree. Of course it does. Fine. She says, um, 
you all should know they'll be expecting us. We should be ready for a fight. I'm ready. And oh, are you talking about the people? Who's <laughs> they? The liars. Whoever has taken the Feywild. They're guarding that place for a reason. They know. Those sub apparitions. We should send Tearsome in first. You think we can talk him into it? No. Highly unlikely. I think Vash already tried. Gods in general seem to be quite useless. It could work if we could convince him. I'm sure he could make a good distraction, but would he be willing to make the sacrifice? I doubt Hearsome could stand against them for long. Well, speaking of gods, how about those two that you talked with? What did Apart from giving you back your memories, what else did they tell you? Would they help? No. The memories did help. You ask, did you ask them to help? Surely they, they must have some stake in this fight. Aren't they also of the Feywilds? Who, yeah. the twins? Yeah. They're Archfey. Yeah, they're Archfey. Yeah. yeah. Um, You'd think they would want to help to get their home back, too. They want yeah, why are we sacrificing so much to get everyone else's stuff back? We've got our own problems. You're not the only one sacrificing something. She kind of like loses it for a moment. And then by the end of it, like what she said, she kind of like calms herself down again. Are you sacrificing something, Melora? Um, she says, uh, the twins want to help. But there's old agreements that need to be honored. What agreement? Those agreements say they can't help. Agreements? No. It just causes other strife in their world. An agreement my father made a long time ago that I agreed to honor in order to keep this one on the wheel. What agreement? Wait, didn't she already talk to Dan and Orlin about this? She didn't say anything about a marriage. Oh, okay. Um, she says, uh, my father, uh, my father made agreements to betroth his daughters to many. And in the Feywild, there was one I was agreed to marry. Before I was created, mind you. But then he was known as the Sun Prince. I understand he changed when things didn't work out in his favor. When I ran. He was known as the what? The sun. She called him the sun prince. We're, we're talking about the prince of frost. He became the prince of frost ah. after after this. His heart his heart grew cold, or whatever, because of this. Jake Grinch. Yeah. So he's not the same person anymore. Great. Oh, are you saying you're gonna marry this guy once I'm dead? I'm saying that I promise to. Who's your father? Um, I think we mentioned the name before. I can't recall. Uh, let me see if I have it. Let's see here. Um, I'll tell you right now, her only response for you is a scowl. Uh, while, I, while I look at some stuff. 
So let me let me see if I understand this correctly. Those two things show up. The twins, you call them. Twins of the And sea. they want to help, but the only way they can help is by giving you back your memories. They can't do anything else. Fight, maybe. No. They gave me my power back as well. Do they have any power? Some, but it's limited. Do they have more than us? I'm going to guess probably. Not now, no. But they're Archfey. They're stronger than Archfey. Interesting. I, yep. Together you are, certainly. If you wanted, you could probably kill Hirsum. I wouldn't doubt it. Become Archfey? Keep that in mind. Become Archfey? No. I, I, I don't think any of you could do I that. I thought that's how it worked with gods. If you kill a god, you become the god. <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> oh, you're serious. No. That's not how it works. What about if you crush an orb? I mean, Portland gives you a dirty look. It's not going. <laughs> it's not going. Just to, wondering how it works. It's not going to help you become a god. You need apotheosis for that. No plethora. Oh, what? Being, how do you trigger that sort of metamorphosis? Depends on the person. Hmm. Do you? Did I ever tell you how I triggered that? No didn't and you were born a god right i was made one yeah well i think i was made one too according to hear some we were chosen or oh. something yeah you were born human i think but you didn't like to talk about your time in the arcana You went, You underwent apotheosis too. Somehow, you undid it. That's all I can really tell you. So you've been restored to your your full power. You said. She nods. You have your orb back, or? She nods again, slower this time. So. I guess I'm just finding it hard to understand how. You have the power to help us. You're here fighting. But all these others don't have the ability to do that. They're not all fighters, Bash. It could certainly be bodies in the way. They're all different, just like people. Everybody can become a fighter if they need to. And it seems like we're kind of in a time of need. <laughs> and some of them are fighting, I'm sure. Just because we're not there to see it doesn't mean the fight isn't happening. Why you know, don't we like focus the fight? To persuade the wrong person. Is that how many archfey now? Two? Three? Three. There's three just sitting here. Maybe four of the the Unless the horse is a is the horse an archfey? More like holds up a hand and she goes Have you ever heard the story of the scorpion and the frog? Hi. Bash says yes. Odin, you said maybe? Probably. I mean, Odin probably would have since he's a bard, I'm assuming. Yeah, probably. Yeah. She says, it's, it's the only way I can think of to explain this. All right. In the story, there's a scorpion and a frog on the side of a river. And the scorpion asks the frog to help carry him across the river. The frog says, no, you'll sting me and we'll both drown. And the scorpion says, I promise I won't sting you. So they agree. The scorpion hops on the frog's back, and the frog starts to carry the scorpion across the river. Halfway across the river, 
the scorpion stings the frog. And they both, as the frog begins to die, the frog says, why did you sting me? And the scorpion says, I can't help it. It's in my nature. She says, here's some, here's some isn't one to fight because it's not in his nature. So he'll let all of his home be destroyed? He'll do what he can, I'm sure. He gave, like he gave Odin a sword. He Which gave it, may or may not have been stolen. Does it... She kind of chuckles. Does it matter if, it, if it's a weapon we can use against them? If it turns the tide? Monkey as he was, he had hands and thumbs. He could have wielded it himself. He couldn't wield it like this one. Maybe not. I think it's just very difficult for someone like us to understand how you could possibly not fight for your home. It's more complicated than that. It's like asking fire not to burn. We, we don't have souls like you. Choice isn't quite the same for us. Then why are you allowed to fight? I was born fighting. Fighting is in my nature, Vash. It's not a choice. It's just what I do. And Oberon, is he a fighter? He has to be if we're, that's, everyone's counting on him. Everyone says we need him, but no one said that he's going to take the fight to him. He fights. He was taken over. He was beaten once. He yeah. hunts. He's probably playing the long game. From what I understand, Oberon never runs from a fight. Quite the gambit, letting yourself be killed, knowing that you must be able to come back. Maybe he was just raiding for the right champion. She looks at Orlin. Can we all just agree to only help gods who are actually fighters from this point on? My like, god is so a fighter. Because they're the ones that are actually going to help us. Yeah, so we're going to help Lord Oberon. That's fine, but when X god from the next plane decides they need our help, it's time to fuck off. I mean, I think if he some asks for help, I probably won't. Good, we're agreed. What if we meet my god, Sir Nonus? He hunts with Oberon. Where is Sir Nonus? I don't know. I thought I met him a while back, but apparently it was just your friend who turned into dust, sadly. Maybe down on the floor. Nunes is doing like what um a good fairy dragon friend whose name Ella forgets, but Orlin would remember. <laughs> Um, <laughs> maybe he's helping find uh, the Archfey. Maybe. Maybe he's helping to gather the others who hunted with Lord Oberon. Is, uh, is Sir Narnos, or whoever he said, is that a fighter? Or... He is, he's a great hunter. He gave me this power. He hunts with get... Oberon. By the way, hunting and fighting are two very different things. I think he's like he can kill. Back. He's like Oberon's hunting dog or something, if I recall. Let me let me look. Laura looks in her book. He's like a he's like a dog <laughs> humanoid kind of thing. Let's see, I think I put that information. Sir Nonos is or Sir Sir no, whatever. How do you say that? 
Uh, I no, I think no. he's a goat. He's a goat. He's a horn lord of the hunt. Yeah. Where did I put? That's my knowledge, of course. Here, I I have there the information is. you gave us before. Yeah, I was looking for it. I couldn't find it for a second. Cernunos. Um, That's what he said. Cernunos. Where is it? Where? Why are you hiding? Wild elf with stag horns. It shines very similar to Oberon. Yeah, he's pretty similar, I guess. Uh, where is it at? I can't find him. Oh, there it is. Okay. He, he leads the wild hunt. Yes. Horned Lord of the Hunt. Hunting with Oberon in the Beastlands. The wild elf with stag horns. So yeah, it looks kind of like Oberon. Um, Oberon's hunt master who leads the wild hunt. A group of hunters made of divine beings and other archfey known as the Beast Lords. And it talks about who the Beast Lords are. It mentions a few of them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Cernunos counts himself among the Beast Lords, a sovereign of satyrs and centaurs, and many half-animal folk. Um, yeah, that's basically all that handout says about him. So is he a fighter, Melora? Let's put it this way. If you had to choose... A dozen gods that you think would actually be useful in the fight against the flesh. Who'd you name? You're asking Melora who she would name that would yep. be useful? Yep. Any part of Aed would be useful. Aed is the earth? Is that right? Fire. Oh. You should know that one. Yeah, should know that <laughs> She says, uh, if we could find even a fragment, I'm sure it would be useful. So good. For Earth? We could turn to the world, I suppose. What about the ones we're familiar with? Judgment? The Tower? They fighters. The tower, certainly. How about your father? Is your father a fighter? Yeah, what was his name again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let, let me see if I can find it. It's gonna punch me. <laughs> uh, I. So I imagine that uh, the same way that they recognize the Agape's name, they probably recognize like different gods and, and Archfey names, right? Uh, sorry, what? Uh, the, uh, the two people that are people. with us. Do they recognize, like, are they the same way that they parked up at Agape? Do they seem to recognize Oberon and these other different names of deities and Archfey? They don't pay them any mind, no. Oh, okay. You you sound so echoey. Like, not in a, in a, like, your voice is actually echoing, but it's like you're in a cave. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, that's the sick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the room you're in. Nereus. That's what it was. It was Nereus. Daughter of Nereus. That's right. I did mention it before. I did Nereus mention it before. Like that. So I was trying to make sure I got it right. Because I was like, I know I, I talked about this before. I can't remember exactly what I pulled it from. It was Nereus, yeah. Is he a fighter? Uh, she says... He's... Powerful, certainly. But... It sounds like he's more of somebody who makes promises he can't keep. She nods. Not someone we could trust to fight with us. All right, then. But I think each of the Beast Lords would be helpful. You say, oh, they can hunt, but they can't. It doesn't mean they can fight. Wouldn't you say anybody who, who chases things down to kill them can be of help? Well, it depends. If you're not allowed to attack me back, I could kill you very easily. But part of being in a hunt is to not get caught. 
caught by... What are we hunting? If you're fighting something, if you're hunting something dangerous, right? Then it might decide to turn around and fight back. Especially if it is actually a mother and thinks you're there to So in to this scenario, it children. is not facing you first. What? You said it would turn around. That that was just a figure speech. That is generally how a hunt goes, speech? though. Um, Melora says that uh, Cerninos Sir, Sir certainly would be a capable warrior, but he's always had more of a do-it-yourself attitude. Catwork, maybe not so much. Cats are kind of lazy. And, uh, as to what you were saying, Orlan, I've never heard of a stag killing the hunter. It was the other way around. Do you only hunt stag? Stag runs, the hunter hunts. Do you, do you only hunt stag? Even a boar. You could, could possibly injure someone, but never heard of one actually getting a kill. Even if it gored you in the stomach? Injured. Not killed. Still has hooves and it could charge you or something. We don't hunt bears where I come from. Boars right now? Shouldn't we be talking about who can help us? <laughs> All right, everybody but Vash take three XP for RP. <laughs> Only because of... You know what? I'll give you another three XP, sure. It's a different scene. Yeah, this is separate RP. Yeah, this is separate RP. Man, that's a long walk. <laughs> well, I said it would be about 20 minutes. Because <laughs> right? we were talking so much, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so we come up to a point, and uh, remember, you're walking like a long sand. Um, where the uh, the ground stops, and you're looking across like essentially a chasm that's probably thirty feet across. Um, but there's bits, uh, so like in, the sand has sort of turned into like a desert ruin, and there's almost like a stone path that you're walking along, and there's bits of the stone path that are sort of floating in this uh, void. So like it continues uh, across the void. Uh, but they're just sort of floating there. Uh, as you start to approach this gap, um, the uh, the two leading you kind of uh, like turn towards you all to sort of wait for you to gather yourselves, I guess, to make it across this gap. This is just a five foot gap. Yeah, it's like thirty feet across. Um, oh. But but you can uh, like there's stone tiles that are sort of like floating in the air. Um, so if you could like jump from tile to tile or something like that, uh, you should be fine. Think, think like, uh, this is a terrible analogy and much more dangerous than what I wanted to evoke, but you know, squid game where they're on the glass panels. Yep. <laughs> kind of like that, but, but they're made of stone and they're just floating in the air and you're having to like jump from, you're going to have to be jumping from like panel to panel. We're going to have you guys make a check if you jump across. Some of you can fly, I'm sure. So. How, how, long was how this far walk? did you say? 30 feet? Yeah, yeah, 30 feet. You can teleport across, too. Yeah, I think I'll probably face up when everybody else starts going. What were you saying? Yeah, how long was the walk to get here? About 20 minutes. Okay, I'd still have to spare. Issue, do you want to lift? Um, yeah, that'd be great. I'll just... Grab issue with the spirit and or, anyone else want to go? Or you want to try and hop? How much can the spirit carry? Uh, it, not carrying it, just it can teleport as many teleport. things as can oh, fit around. Oh, that's right. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't we just all take it? Uh, so these these stones—they're not very big, right? Um, 
they're big enough to stand on for like a person. For to one person to stand on. Yeah. It'll take okay, a so while. Yeah, I'm going to. I, I could go by myself. Yeah. And I'm gonna, like... I'm gonna grapple Ishu though. Okay. Pick him up, sorta. Okay. Which I'm very, very overloaded at the moment. So like the most I can do is just hold him up. <laughs> yeah, he crawls up. He crawls up onto your shoulder, and he's like standing on your shoulder. Oh, oh he's smaller than I thought he was. What? He's like. Three and Isn't a half. he like three foot? Three and a half, four yeah, feet. Yeah, I thought he was yeah. three foot tall. <laughs> he's he's like, standing like he could, he, on my he bent could corpse. He could climb up he on your shoulders. He could sit on easy. your shoulders, though. Yeah. Like a yes. child. You could sit on my shoulders. Yeah, 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 yeah. this fish is not that strong, though. All right, anyways. Uh, I'll teleport 15 feet and then teleport again. And then I'll send the bird back to get um, anyone else who wants it. All right. So you and Ishu teleport across. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, the two, uh, the bird heads back across to like get anybody else who wants to go across. So just to kind of help you guys picture this, um, the, uh, the, the stone pathway is in rows, like it's, uh, two rows, um, of stone. And there's like a piece every five to 10 feet. Um, so you could like try to jump across. We'll just do like a, like a, if you want to try to jump across on the stone, it'll be like a DC 15. Athletics or acrobatics check, I think it'd be fine. Um, Do they seem solid or are they like rotating? In some of them or? are slightly turning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, uh, yeah. And Theoretically, you're... could somebody crawl on Shah's back and go across with the bird? Uh... Are you rideable, Shah? Yeah. yeah. You are? You're a mount? <laughs> That's slightly you're, disturbing. You're willing to be a mount? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not super heavy. You want to hold that one, and Orlin points at Lyrum. <laughs> He's a slippery stone statue. But then you could go across faster. Uh, well, we could all get across faster we, uh, if you're able to do two at a time. Two is probably the limit for the spirit, for those sort of stones. I don't mind touching the stone. Or, I mean, the, the bird. Well, all you gotta do is touch it. Alright, I touch it. Is Lyrum going with Shah or no? Lyrum is still cautious of Shaw. Every time that he's gone near him, he's been lifted up or attempted to. I think this is the, <laughs> this is two times that he's done it. He's suspicious. So no. Well, you would have to no. ride him, I <laughs> okay. think. So it teleports Shaw halfway across and then teleports again. All right. There's so nice. so. Uh, uh, Shaw, there's this moment where, like, when it teleports you halfway across. You're like, make a make a dexterity save. Probably, Stone's not big enough for something. Probably be fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. So there's this um there's this moment where it teleports you like you're in the middle and your hooves kind of skitter on the uh the stone kind of like uh like a deer or something would on like, cement. <laughs> um and then <laughs> you don't you don't slip and fall or anything and then the bird uh teleports you the rest of the way and you're fine. These um, butter hooves. Uh, it was more. Dane, do you need help? Sorry. If we no. if we carry one person, can we teleport with the spirit? Is that how that works? Sort of. Malora and you are both full. Like the issue is small, so it, so it might be like... best to just go one at a time. But I have the spirit for forty more minutes. <laughs> it has unlimited teleports. Uh, then. You can uh, no, the two monks go to jump across, and they have no issues. They're like, uh, they're like those guys in that movie, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, where they just like <laughs> how long is this guy? Right, run a, run across the tops of trees or whatever. Thirty so, feet. Uh, yeah, it's 30, thirty feet. Thirty feet across. Yeah. Yeah.
I'll have Melora so, go over to the spirit. Yeah, well, the spirit will teleport Melora twice. All right, so we got Shaw, Vash, Ishu, the two monks, and Melora across. And then Orlin the teleported to down room, right? Okay. Well, yeah, Orlin's going to wait until everybody started going across uh, before she goes, because she doesn't want, if something tries to attack, somebody to be by themselves. Yeah, the two the two monks are waiting at the edge on the other side, just in case somebody slips or something. Illyrium will try to go second to last. Okay. All right, well, the spirit will take Odane next. All right. So it's just Orlin and Lyrum now. Yep, and then Lyrum wanted to go Lyrum second will go to last. next. Yep. And then Orlin, you're going to take the spirit. Too. So everybody takes a spirit. Just uh, back and no, forth. Orlin no, is using a face step. Okay. <laughs> cool. And the spirits teleport is not a spell, right? Sorry, what? The spirit... It's not a spell, it's just yeah, an yeah. ability. Exactly. Okay. Just making sure. All right. So everybody makes it across. Cool. So um let me put you guys on the map here. How did Legroom get across? The spirit. The spirit teleported. Spirit. Oh, you are taking the spirit. Okay. Yeah, I just wasn't taking it with Shaw. With Shaw. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't trust Shaw. I teleported him off the side of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, ahead of you, you see that giant uh, black obelisk. Um, it's sort of uh, in the center of this area that seems to be in a state of flux. Um, the sand stretches out before you, but ends um, just on the other side is a, uh, like a piece of terrain that seems to be made of um, like volcanic rock. And there's uh, lava and fire coming from the lava. Um, and then over to the right side, uh, there's a beautiful forest. The trees are unlike any you've ever seen. Uh, they do sort of remind you of the Feywild, but they're these even brighter and more vibrant colors. Um, let's show you guys the map. Shouldn't you say you were looking for some vegetation to pray to your lord for? Uh, Would those qualify? Hey, do you want to go sit there for a few hours? Sorry, hours? Oh, I don't know how long it'll take. Can we come back for you? I don't want to wait hours. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can wait until we stop for a long rest. It's fine. I didn't get your name. What was it? I'm going to say that to the guy. Uh, Lyrum. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was through the mind link. Okay. <laughs> it would have been funny, though. <laughs> Uh, let's let's see here. Uh, okay. Um, he says. Uh, he says, "My name is Matonu." Matonu, can you put that in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> Matonu, can you put that in the chat, please? He says, "What is this chat you speak of?" Uh, your friend <laughs> or your companion? Um. Yeah, he says. Uh, my friend here uses oh man, the name Aral. A R A L. Put that in the chat. Also, this is uh, what, what did you call this thing? Guidepost. Guide on. Guide on. And so, how does this work? He says, um, "Well." It's a bit complicated, but these resonate in a way. Um, they each have their own particular magical vibration. Um, and so magic can be used to sort of pinpoint them uh, like breadcrumbs. And we can use this, and he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a pomegranate. <laughs> like, he pulls a... It, it looks, uh, like, uh, ripe. Like, um, right at the time you'd want to eat it. Uh, but it's strangely, like, fresh for being in someone's pocket, right? Um, he's holding mm -hmm. his pomegranate in his hand. 
and he says, uh, we can use this to sort of jaunt through the plane, get us there quicker. A fruit. <laughs> he, he grins. It's not a fruit. What is it? He's feeding us. What? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what that is. Uh, a pomegranate is a fruit. <laughs> like it's, right. it's, it's yeah, it's, yeah. But it, Orland's asking because he pulled out the fruit to show Bash. Fruit, right? Yeah, so they're all just asking Bash fruit. if he's feeding <laughs> us. <laughs> we have to eat the fruit. He sh he we says eat. eat. I have to eat. He says eat? Question mark. What 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 is the purpose of the fruit? He says, um, this is an enchanted object. Kind of confused. Shitting me. He, like, holds it up, like, what, you haven't seen one of these before? Okay, sure. And he gestures, okay. he gestures to the, to the giant pillar over here. Uh, right, so, if you hold that in your hand and you... Touch it, it, it takes you there. It's going to open a conduit. A conduit should take us there. Is that a painful process, this conduit? No. Good, we're good then. Just, you don't want to enter one unless we're doing, like, in, unless you do it like this. They can appear unpredictably on the plane but you don't want to just enter any conduit they can be dangerous why are they dangerous where can they take you anywhere can they take you to a place that has no air just water they can take you to anywhere in the multiverse that's why they're so dangerous other, other places so one could theoretically take us back to he the Feywilds? He nods. And there's no way to know where it's going to lead until you hop in? Exactly. It could take you somewhere. It could just rip you apart and spit you into the astral plane. That's possible, too. Can I do an Arcana check on the pomegranate? Vash is... <laughs> yeah, you can do an Arcana explaining check. Explaining this as he's talking to the guy out loud for everyone. So all we have to do is eat it? Lyrim, you look at it, and it's not a pomegranate. He's holding, like, um, it looks like a beautifully crafted golden, like, maybe it's some kind of stopwatch. There's a lot of gears turning on it. It's made, it's He's made definitely this, interested in this. Yeah, it's made of this beautiful gold, and it, like, reflects the light perfectly. Um, and it's just, Wait. like, all these gears are, like, turning. It's gold, but it looks like a pomegranate. Do you guys does see? does every well no that's what Lyrum sees does everybody else see it differently? Everyone else right now sees a pomegranate. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, no, uh, we don't need it, Odin. I I guess um, you don't know. <laughs> I look at Vash. Say <laughs> yeah, he did. Ask him how he said. Eat? Question mark. He was like, eat, like. I, I look at Vash, ask him how he powers the gears. The gears to... I point at the thing. The fruit don't have gears, statue. That's snow fruit. Looks like fruit. Vash, make a perception check. Oh, I don't know what perception I can do. Kana isn't going to happen. Or not. Oh, it looks kind of like a pomegranate. Can I look at it? Sure. Ask them. Um, what do you want? The perception or arcana? I'll let you decide. If you think there's something else that arcana. might be relevant here, you can also use that. Like, if you think maybe nature would work. Yeah. Something like that. Well, if, if Laren Insight. saying it, it's got gears, um, and Orlin knows what illusion magic looked like. 
or knows what illusion magic is, rather. So she's thinking maybe there's an illusion on it. So let's do Arcana. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a pomegranate. <laughs> I did, there's no gears in that. He's just being weird again. Does it smell fruity? Make a perception check. <laughs> don't hold the whole pomegranate. I don't think that you would be able to smell a pomegranate. Okay. I maybe he can. Never mind. I, mean, I guess he can. Shaw, he's he's holding <laughs> a, he's holding a small puppy in his hand. <laughs> That's a cute cute hound you have. And it's like uh it's like yiping and stuff and kind of barking. You know that he can't understand you, right? Oh, he can't. Does he know sign language? Translating. Do you think he knows sign language? What is sign language? <laughs> you know, if somebody's like, how do you communicate with the blind? Are you okay? Wait, the blind. Yeah. <laughs> I I really every time I talk to all of you, it makes me wonder how we survive this long. <laughs> We're the mute. With the blind. <laughs> the half blind, I guess. Yeah. The... What? <laughs> I have a headache. Oh, sound sudden. blind. You, you make signs on the floor. Uh, my companions say that they're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, they nod. <laughs> Did you ask him about the gears? I sure did. He said that fruit doesn't have gears. I look at, I look at him. You look that's at not him. a fruit. Yeah, yeah, that's all he does. <laughs> <Just looks laughs> <at him. laughs> okay. Would anyone else like to make a <laughs> check? It's, it's just, just Odin now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Odin an issue, I guess. I don't know what Ishii says about it. In the Lord. <laughs> Orlin would have probably just saw, saw Oberon's order. Ishii fails. <laughs> it's a pomegranate, says Ishu. Alora. Oh. Let's see here. 15. Ordain. Oh. Alora. Mm. Malora lunges at him. What? Malora lunges at him and tries to grab the thing in his hand. I've... Um, let's see. Is that hungry, Malora? You're gonna kill it. You react to this. She goes. She goes. Give it to me. Give it to me now. She's like trying to take the thing out of his hand. She lunges at him, and I guess I'll make a grapple. Uh, Odin, control your god. Uh, control your bitch, Odin. <laughs> Whatever that thing is. From She's the... her own person. Uh, what are you Laura, oh, if you're wow. hungry, we have wow. rations. She, she rolled two crits in a row. Uh, what? <laughs> what is going on with Laura? Um, this is gonna go well. Okay. Uh, okay, so she lunges at him. Now let me have this guy roll against her as he tries to stop her from grabbing this thing. Out of his hand. Um, he I mean, he has acrobatics. Yeah, he doesn't have the acrobatic skill, so I just roll dex, I guess. Yeah. I assume they're better dex than fails. Nope. Um, okay, so not a twenty. She grabs it out of his hand, and she's like holding it, and uh, she's like holding it like close to her chest. Oh, thanks, and <laughs> <laughs> I assume um, they immediately become aggressive. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, hmm, do they attack her or do they just try to grab it back? I think, I think one of them grabs her. One of them's going to try to grapple her back. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, let's see, she's probably going to, Laura, what are you doing? Really good. 
She says, I need this. It's it's for Dane. I have to have it. She's like obsessed with this. Thing. She's, she's like holding it close to her chest and she's trying to protect that hungry. it. A dog? Let him get us to the city before you take it, you daft idiot. Um and yeah, he reaches and tries to grab her, but she like moves out, she like ducks and moves out of the way, and she runs back behind Orlin. And she's like looking looking at this thing in her hand, and she's like turning it over and like trying to study it. Wait, Melora, please. What is that? She's like, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Hold him back. And so over the mind, like I was just gonna say, excuse my companion. She's having an issue. Bash, Um, ask them why. I'll get it back for you. Just give me a minute. Ask him why he's seeing gears, and she points at Larum. Uh, he's seeing a puppy, and she's seeing something that she thinks is useful for Odain. But we listening? just see fruit. Or are they just going for it? Um, they're listening to you, Bash. Okay, they, then they, I will they, do they that. Don't, they don't lunge right for her. Like, the one you're talking to holds out his hands non-threateningly and like gestures to the other one to do the same. Like, kind of slaps at him, and he does the same. And they kind of they're kind of motioning towards Melora, like it's okay, we're not going to hurt you. Um, I will ask the thing that Orlin said. Uh, why it looks different, basically. Uh, he says, yeah. uh, <sighs> some of our companions are seeing this thing differently. Why? He says, the enchantment our master put on this object makes it look desirable to certain people. He says very slowly and carefully. Well, apparently you made it look so desirable, she stole it. She needs to Is understand. it fake? It's an illusion? Yes. Melora, it's not what you think it is. It's an illusion. Um, she, I mean, it's a weird kind of illusion, because it's like you succeed on the roll, that's when you see the illusion. Um, so let me roll for her again. It really is a pomegranate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's like, no, I see what it is. How did they get this? They shouldn't have it. What do you think it is, Melora? Um, she looks up and she's like, her eyes are kind of like tearing up and she says, it's, it's his orb. And she points to Odin. I am going to cast a spell magic on... The pomegranate. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. No. Fuck. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. By the way, guys, you're by the ledge. You might I'm, fall. I'm casting it to fourth level. Okay. So you know what dispel magic could do, right? Like you or know when this succeeds, I'm throwing Wait. you off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, doesn't he have to roll an arcane? He does. Yeah, I feel... He does. I just Fourth want... level I'm targeting DC specifically 14. the pomegranate. I just want to make He's sure. I know. I know. I Tim's. Can't. Hold on. I know Tim's a really good player, so I just want to make sure that he understands the uh, the consequences of this. If if this <laughs> yeah, is the object you need to travel, um, and you dispel the magic on it, you're not going to have that object anymore. I just want you to um, understand. Like, if it has an enchantment on it that lets you use, use you know the that. guidons to travel. So, like, if you dispel the magic on it, then potentially you're not going to be able to get to the city. Wait, uh, didn't Vash relay that information to us? That this. Oh, this yeah. If, okay, yeah. If Liam we knows do. what it does, then he's not messing with it. I forgot he translated that. Yeah. He said okay. that. Yeah, if he knows what it is. He to get to the city. It. And then he yelled at Melora and said, Why didn't you steal it? Um, After we got to the city. Yeah. Um, Orlin is going to look at Melora and, and say, if it's the orb, don't you think I would be able to tell? She kind of looks up at you and... Um, May I touch it? She, she, it's like she's just breathing really fast a second ago and her breathing starts to slow. And um, she holds, holds it out to you. When you meant uh, Odain's orb, do you mean Oberon's orb or the fool's orb? No, the fool's orb. The fools, yeah. She says the fools. How? 
I guess Orlin wouldn't be able How to. How would Orlin be able to? Yeah, that, that was I, was thinking, you, I was thinking you meant it was over on Orlin. No, no, she was talking about it's like no, no. Odin's, Odin's special orb or whatever that we haven't seen before. So, like, who knows what it looks like to her? Yeah. Well, I think simple. Orlin will still will still go along with it. Um, with like, do you think I'd be able to tell her, or uh, she'll add on, or or a Odain himself? I'll let you make the check on it again. Okay. <laughs> so you could possibly succeed and see something <laughs> you really want, like Oberon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think she's really trying anymore. Yeah, but... if, if you're just like, I believe it's it it's supposed to look like a pomegranate, and you're not questioning yeah. it, then yeah, it'll just look like a pomegranate. I Even if it is the fool's orb, Mora, we need it to get to the city. Do you want to stay out here? She uh, she looks at it again. I, I don't think it's what you think it is. Um, if you want to be sure, why don't you ask Odin to to have a look? Uh, I rolled the wrong thing, but it's fine. D20 is low enough. Uh, I don't know how I hit intelligence. Are they the same? Bonus? No. Probably not. No. She's pretty wise. I don't... Well, I was trying to roll, yeah, perception, but it's what, whatever. Uh, here, let me just roll it. How about that? That way I don't have to feel gross. Yeah, she says... No, she's convinced still that it's it's that. She so Papa she, Dane, I think if anybody would know it would be him. I don't see it as what you see it as. Even still. Can I can I grab it from whoever has it? It's Melora. I think Melora has it. Orlin was just touching it. She she's <clears> trying to <throat> calm down Melora. Melora, can I see it? Yeah, she holds it out to you. Um, this is the first time I'm touching this thing. Do I feel anything from it? Did you make a check on it yet? Yeah. A 15. Um, when, when did he roll a 15? No. Uh, right, before Mo, right before Melora's 20. Oh, okay, yeah, your yeah. Roll perception. Roll another perception check. There you go. <laughs> what does Odin see? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to ask. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ask you something, Keo, because I'm actually okay. not, I'm actually not 100 percent sure of something to have you see. Oh, is it supposed to? Be is it supposed to be something that I desire? Yeah. You got it. You can just whisper it to me if you want. Or you can just I tell me. I want to know what Fash would see. Now, now that we've said it <laughs> yeah, out Yeah, I know. Loud, I want to know just, what Orlin would see. <laughs> tell me. You know, it would probably be the most glorious weapon he's ever seen in his life. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. Better Let's than see. the Sunblade? Yeah. I'm sure there's more glorious weapons than the Sunblade. Or at the very oh, least, man. it looks more glorious, <laughs> right? Like, it's, right. it's it's an immense, like, but light sword. Um, and the, the hilt is very decorated and ornamental, whereas the Sunblade's kind of plain, right? Right. Um, and uh, the blade itself is made, of, it's like this really uh, long, sharp uh, black blade. Think of, like, Auron from Final Fantasy X. Um, Mm -hmm. but uh, it's like crackling with lightning uh, along the edges of it uh, and it's like dripping off like this weird chaotic energy right she's it's like, covered in runes and it's glowing yeah yeah and she like holds it out to you uh, I don't feel anything from this Melora this is just the best weapon I've ever seen are you sure this is my orb I mean of course I've never seen my orb before this could be it, but I doubt it, it doesn't look like it would fit my body. If it was the orb, wouldn't something happen when he touched it more? Um, 
yeah, let's see. You're trying to reason with her. Right. Um, hmm. Yeah, you're you're probably right. Weapon. What are you talking about? Let's just let's let's just not just hand it back then, to him, Odin. Then I yeah, let me just walk over to him and hand it back to him. So what do we do with this thing? He, uh, uh, they say that all they have to do is walk up to the place, and it'll open a portal, and we'll go through. Yeah, he uh, opens it big enough for all of us, not just him. The place? What place? I don't think they'd lead us here if it wasn't to the to the city where I actually don't know what their city's called. Wait, can you ask them if Agape is already there? Because Honestly, the only reason why we're going to the city is because we don't know where else to go. That's where the horse told us to go. What is the name of oh, your wait. city? <laughs> um, let's see here. I forgot that's where Agape told us to go. The pe or the city where the people yeah. live. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, I I forgot that that's where we were where he wanted us to go. Yeah, I I think he told us that the master the portal to the master would be in the city. He says um we call it the floating city or uh Zareth. I mean there's like a weird name I can't say. Shrockletor. Can you spell it? Uh, I can copy or, uh, put it in the, in the <laughs> chat. Yeah, I can copy and paste it. Maybe. Um, it's got <clears throat> it's got some apostrophes in it. Uh, let's see here. Those are fun. There you go. Shrak lore. Shrak, shrak. Yeah. Shrak lore. I can't do it. It's <laughs> the way it is. <laughs> it sounds better the way you say it. That's all I know. Uh, okay. So I will tell them the name of the city, and then I will say. Yes. Uh, we were following a horse here. Uh, a being known as Agape. Yeah, their, their heads turn. You seemed familiar with him. Is he uh, in the city? Have you seen him? He, he was occupied. Uh, got himself into some trouble, from what I understand. Some unpredictable mix-up with... The, the gate, the stairwell. When we get to the city, will you be able to show us how to reach the master? He nods. Well, the horse is busy, but they can show us how to get to the master, so we don't need him. Okay. He, like, holds out his hand and just, like, hold, like uh, palm up as, like, Odin sets the thing in his hand. And the other guy kind of makes a face like, ah, oh, thank you. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> and then they, uh, they start to walk over towards the, uh, the, uh, obelisk. Do the bond. I'll just say, sorry about the mix up. I'll follow them. Yeah. Just like, not a problem. I understand. Stay close, Ishu. Oh yeah. Ishu and Lear, we're still down here. Uh, okay. Um, now, it is 10 o'clock, so maybe this would be a good time to end the session. What do you guys think? Yeah. I'm good to keep going. We're in now, but I need, uh, I need to be done within an hour or so. That way. Well, okay. Ibuprofen is still working, so I'm fine if you guys want to keep going. <laughs> Birdie, Kyo? I'm, I'm good with stopping here. I'm good with stopping here. Yeah. Yeah. We could stop Absolutely. here. <clears throat> All right. We can we can cut it here. So we see you guys like stepping towards the uh uh the guide on um and uh yeah, he's holding the uh pomegranate up and chanting some words. Um and we hear a loud screech in the distance. Um, and we see like, we see a couple of you start to turn and look up in the air. Like 
where the the noise came from. It sounds like a almost like the hawk sound effect we have, but probably a lot deeper uh, and quite a bit louder, more ferocious. Um, and we see like uh, a bright light coming from the sky. Um, maybe like we see one of you like put your hand up in front of your face as you're looking up to see where the noise came from. Uh, and we see this giant flaming bird uh, approaching oh. and screeching. It's immense. Oh. Um, similar to my small uh, flaming yeah, bird? It's a bigger uh, spirit. <laughs> yeah, similar to your wildfire spirit, sure. I mean, it's definitely a bird wreathed in flame. Um, and it seems fairly aggressive, also. <laughs> wildfire spirit is all flame. Does this thing have, like, a corporeal body? Let me see. Uh, no, it looks to be made of fire. Um, okay, this should be easy. I'll just get a bigger spirit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if you know what this is, but it's not a wildfire spirit. I promise you that. Oh, um, wildfire spirit uh, that... scaled up to CR 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it, you know, you probably it, like there could be some, some, some stuff there. But we'll, we will see you next time on Force of Flesh. I hope you guys had fun today. Uh, you survived the combat. You made some friends. Uh, friends, enemies. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you, you disposed of some bodies. Sort of. They did, I guess. Um, we learned there's a chance I, I did that say that I could save those has people, an too. orb somewhere. Um... Yeah, you did say that you could save those people, but you weren't like doing anything right then and there. And they kind of need some, they needed something to be done right then and there. So, um, yeah. Also, your magic wasn't really working very well. <laughs> yeah. Also, Vash would like to point out that he asked uh, Melora for a dozen names of fighting gods, and she could name us six. Uh yeah. She would have been able to come up with I more. mean, she started to name some and then the the conversation kind of got sidetracked. Um but, you know, there might be more. We'll see. Um maybe Gods. maybe maybe they're already here. Like, I don't know what to tell you guys. Um uh viewers, I hope you guys have fun watching Unrooted. Always great to see you here. Uh, we had a new chatter in the chat today with Jelly Time. Uh, Jelly Time, very OP name. Uh, thanks for stopping <laughs> by. Um, and make sure to check out every other Friday. There's an Unknown New Orleans show we do live here. Uh, this past week, we did an uh, episode where uh, instead of Megawatts Hornets, now we might be Megawatts Ponies. There is now My Little Pony artwork for each character on the show, so that's fun. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, also check the links in the description if you want to see stuff like uh, Vash artwork, music for the show, um, links to to Ella's uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, virtual cam for for Orlin. What is it? What is it called again? The oh, YouTuber. The the company that I made or the the program I made Orlin's model from. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, so you can find all that stuff in the in the description down below. Um, yeah, and we'll be back next week. I think. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night.